Well, guys, we are back for another episode of the Liberal Asshole Show, episode 99. And what are today's topics? Conservatives rage over Trans Visibility Day. Not Gay Jared sues Stephen Crowder. Earthquakes hit Taiwan. Steve A. Smith destroys shitlery Cunton. Cargo ship crashes into Maltimore Bridge. ISIS attacks Russia. And Israel attacks aid workers in Iranian embassy trying to start World War III. All right, so what do we start off with first? Well, let's start with conservatives raging over trans visibility, Demi. Oh my gosh. And all this just because it happened on Easter. So, yeah, yeah. even people on my commentary server were having a meltdown over this for no reason. I so, it. anyways, um, back on Sunday, I didn't even know about this thanks to you conservatives. As always, why do you conservatives always cry about something that apparently no one knows about? I didn't even know about this day until you all cried about it. If you shut up, I wouldn't even know anything about it. But, anyways. March 31st, apparently, is Trans Visibility Day. And conservatives act like, oh, it's like a whole new thing out of nowhere. No, it's been happening since 2009. So, 15 years and yep. such. And this year, it just so happened to fall on Easter. Because Easter doesn't have a set day. And it's very rarely, sometimes even happens in March. And this was one of those rare times it happened in March and such. So, of course, conservatives had to have a meltdown because... What else are they going to do with their day? Because that's what Karens do. Huh? And yeah, they had a meltdown. That's all they do. Yep. And they had a complete mm. meltdown because Biden acknowledged both. Because, oh, so bad that he acknowledged both people. So, yeah. Let's see them all then over nothing. So this story here is really something. This is uh, all-out, full-on, culture war, brain worm type stuff. So yeah. um, <clears throat> Biden came out the other day. Uh, on Easter Sunday, and he acknowledged the Transgender Day of Visibility, okay? And also, that's not the only other day it was. It was also apparently Cesar Chavez Day, and I saw, I don't know if Biden said anything about Cesar Chavez Day, but I saw other Democratic politicians uh, bring up Cesar Chavez Day. So, you know, they didn't think anything of it. They're just like, hey, you know, uh, transgender day of visibility. Uh, we recognize you. We accept you. You know, all that sort of standard uh, equality acceptance type okay. stuff. Okay. And, uh, and you he acknowledged. Cesar well, Chavez Day is a U.S. federal commemorative holiday proclaimed by President Barack Obama in 2014. The holiday celebrates the birth and legacy of the civil rights and labor, mo and labor movement activist Cesar Chavez on March 31st every year. Never even heard about that till just now. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, he also acknowledged Easter too, you Karen, so yeah. stop crying about it. It's not a big deal. Karen's and Karen's. Whipped out his dick and uh, took a piss on the White House press corps. Like, the, the reaction from the right was just infuriated. So let me walk you through this. There's a lot to say about it. Biden's transgender day of visibility f falling on Easter Sunday sparks reaction. President Joe Biden was slammed on social media after he announced that transgender day of visibility would be recognized on Easter Sunday. The Catholic president on Friday announced his message to all transgender Americans, quote, now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., president of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lives and voices of transgender people throughout our nation and to work toward eliminating violence and discrimination based on gender identity. Red Biden statement on the White House website, Red and Park. Okay. So, that seems um, based. Now, yeah. here's the thing. The Transgender Day of Visibility apparently has been a thing since 2009. And every single year it falls on March 31st. Easter does not fall on March 31st every year. In fact, I remember when I heard that Easter was March 31st this year, my initial thought was like, huh, that's weird. Isn't it usually in like mid-April? Yeah, because that's usually how it no, is, but sometimes it's it happens. Early to mid-April usually. Yep, but sometimes it happens in March. The same date every year for Easter, but this year just happened to fall on March 31st, which is the same day as both Cesar Chavez Day and the Transgender Day of Visibility. Okay. So they go on to say here, Easter, which is observed on Sunday, March 31st this year, is one of the most solemn and important day for Christians. It commemorates the resurrection of Jesus. Biden came under fire Saturday when presidential candidate Donald Trump, politicians and others you won't criticized like Easter the eggs then. A statement from Trump's campaign <laughs> yeah. called Biden's proclamation blasphemous and appalling. Blasphemous. Trump 
You say no, your existence is blasphemy. <laughs> Dude, it's not a big deal. I get what, what about the Easter bunny and all that? Is that blasphemous? Because that's capitalism e version of Easter. Yep. What about it the exists? what about consumer? Like what about capitalism for Christmas? Because that's what most people care about right. now. Is that yeah. blasphemous? Or maybe people just don't care anymore. Demanded an apology from Biden and the White House. It is appalling God, and insulting that Joe Biden's... What I should do in the Trump yeah. It is appalling and insulting that Joe Biden's White House prohibited children from submitting religious eggs... Design egg designs for their Easter art event and formally proclaimed Easter Sunday as Trans Day of Visibility. Sadly, these are just two more examples of the Joe Biden administration's years long assault on the Christian faith. We oh, call on up. Joe Biden's oh, family wow. campaign in White House to issue an apology that. They've been saying to the that millions of literally centuries. Catholics and Christians across America who believe tomorrow is for one celebration Notice only Catholics the resurrection. And Christians. Because remember, a lot of Christians like, they don't think Catholics are real Christians, and a lot of Catholics think they're the only Christians. Tomorrow, March 31st is for one celebration only. Hmm, I wonder if someone was born on March 31st, and I guess they can't celebrate their birthday because, oh, Easter's on that day. Sorry, you don't get to enjoy it. Only us Christians can celebrate Easter on this day, and no one else can celebrate anything. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. Of Jesus yeah. Christ. So, right off the bat here, let me just say, this is the other thing that the right is running with. Oh, my God, the White House prohibited children from submitting religious egg, egg designs for their Easter art event. I'm not necessarily for that, but the reason why they're doing it is because of separation of church and state, you idiots. Yeah, that's what I reckon it is. Now, should kids be able to do it? Yeah, because big deal. But that's why they banned it. They're bringing this up as if this is one, from Joe Biden, and two, new. It is both not from Joe Biden and not new. Yeah. This has been a thing since yeah. 1976. And under Trump, it was the same rules. Now, why? Church in separation of church and state. Called the exactly. Constitution Which is something and the Establishment Clause that has a separation of church and state. You cannot yes. establish a religion. Yep. So if you're doing something that's an official government function and you're making it explicitly Christian, it's sort of like some sketchy ground you're on there legally. Now, look, you could say, hey, I think they should be able to make those right. Okay. Which Take I'm it fine up with, with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Right? This has nothing to do with any of the individual administrations. This has to do with, this. these are the rules, and it was also the case under Donald Trump. This is not new. This is not new. So, look, the thing I can't stand, I, I'm so done with the fake fucking outrage. I'm so done with this virtue signaling. I'm already had to, oh, this is a, while you were asleep, I had to deal with a bunch of idiots on Revolutionary Blackout Network blaming Biden for like all like the woes in the world earlier, so I've had enough of stupidity mm -hmm. to deal with today. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you know, according to them, America lost every single war in the last century and so? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that they lost the we lost the Korean War, we lost Afghanistan and all that, even though we won. I mean, we lo I mean okay, Vietnam War was a, no Vietnam War we lost. Afghanistan was we lost. I'm going to say the Korean War we drew. We at least won in terms of stopping draw. South North Korea from taking them over, so I viewed that as a W. Mm. <laughs> in the end, they lost. <laughs> yeah. The fact that they denied I mean, that was hilarious. At the same time, we, at the same time, we didn't stop them from. Um, we didn't take out the North, so and then it kind of like got stuck in the middle and stuck where it is now. So kind of a stale, permanent. Permanent stalemate is what it is. <laughs> Pipe the fuck down. No, it's not. If you are offended by it, that's a you problem. It just happened to fall on the same day as the Trans Day of Visibility. That's all. Guys, wait till next year when Trans Visibility Day comes up. I bet you no one's going to mention it because Easter won't fall on that day. Oh, if this is true, guess why I found Easter's going to fall on next year? 420. <laughs> oh, nice! Twentieth of the fourth. Now, now, now they're going to be mad about that one somehow. We have a, a monopoly we, on this day. First, they're going to have a meltdown about trans people. Now they're going to have a meltdown if people want to smoke pot or whatever. Or whatever well, you don't, because it's also Cesar Chavez Day. Uh, well, actually, look if that's true. None of this is a big deal at all in any way, shape, or form. None of it's a big deal. 
Imagine being a Yep, it is April 20th next year. It falls on the same day. And guys, who are we kidding? Oh. The idea in the that end, this hasn't become cares? something explicitly non-Christian is preposterous. It's a holiday with bunny rabbits and colorful eggs. That have Find nothing to do with the religious part of Easter, but does anyone cry? Exactly. No! Who cares? See the part in the Bible with the bunny rabbits and the colorful eggs. Find me the part hey, in the Bible. Hey, South Park made that joke a long time ago. Candy. <laughs> yeah. It's not a thing. Yeah, Just like sure Christmas. Done that at some in point. many ways, this has become a sort of secular type holiday. We've mixed in like pagan traditions and American traditions and also. May I remind you all, Christmas was a pagan holiday that Christianity stole yeah, from it them. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not even your guys' holiday either, so I don't want to hear it. You're cultural appropriators. <laughs> stuff with Christian stuff. Just like with. Christmas. Ain't no fucking fat guy with a white beard in the Bible. Ain't no fat ass Santa Claus in an all red suit in the Bible. It, it ties in with the winter solstice, right? And it, like, it's an amalgamation of all different sorts of things that now is a uniquely American thing. And also, by the way, for Christmas, we now it's more based on consumerism and materialism. Capitalism, and like I said earlier, people. Or Christianity or the Bible is ridiculous. It's very anti materialism, anti consumerism. So we have the, these weird holiday mixes that have become like total secular type things. Which and we're still is better. Playing this game where it's like, they say solely Christian, and how dare you say that other days exist? <laughs> so here, here's some more. You sound like uh, the people that cry about Actually, happy fair, holidays. I don't know if this is fake outrage or real it's outrage. The same people people are genuinely stupid. Yep. I think with Trump, it is fake outrage. War on he Christmas. Just, he just an opportunity ah, to act war. like I'm more Christian than he is. I, who fucking gives a fuck? Right. And also, it wasn't like Joe Biden a couple weeks ago was out there saying, you know, I hold my body, my choice thing. That's not actually my take on it. I don't really agree with that. Like the Hyde Amendment he supported. So he's like sort of moderate on the issue of abortion. And he talks about his Catholic faith all the time. But Trump has I'm more re I'm more religious. The guy who's never gone to mass ever and never even goes on Easter Sunday and says things like two Corinthians walk into a bar. But I'm more religious. Here, I'm going to virtue signal show you how religious I am. Look, 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 look. I get it. Pipe down. Pipe down. So Marjorie Taylor Greene, Biden and the Democrats decided Easter, the holy day of our Savior's resurrection, as transgender day of visibility. There's no length Biden and the Democrats won't go to mock your faith and to thumb his nose at God. But we know that Christ is king and blah, blah, blah. Where are you bringing us into this situation? What faith do we have? Hmm. She's trying to broad brush us. So in other words, now, you know, it's this nefarious, like, oh, they're purposefully spitting in your eye. Or Shut the fuck the up, fucking Karen transgender Green. day of visibility thing has been a thing yeah. since 2009. It always falls on March 31st, and it happens to fall the same day as Easter this one year. Or that's the Karen Green what not crying here? about something for a week impossible challenge. It's like you know, it, impossible. It's like clash of civilizations. They're purposely attacking Christianity. Joe Biden is a Catholic. He's an actual Catholic. He actually sort of believes that The funny that thing shit. is, there are going to be probably a lot of right? Americans that are mad because yeah, he's oh, a Catholic. He's like, yes, <laughs> yeah. is part of Christianity. Like, what are we doing here? I was a meltdown people doing? with JFK for Bring quite a while. He was the first Catholic yeah. president. Outrage. I just can't. I just can't. Mm -hmm. All right, who else we got here? Some other representative who knew. Harsh Barger? Harsh Barger? That's her name? Okay, before you oh, get mad at anybody for anything, change oh, your fucking God, last name. name Harsh Barger. What are we doing here? Harsh Burger. Like, what are we... What are, this is a direct assault on Christianity. It's evident the left is determined to undermine our religion and traditions. This isn't just blatant disregard, oh, it's intentional. Nice. 72%. <laughs> if you want to celebrate Easter, go right ahead. No one cares. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to acknowledge trans day of visibility. So stop yeah. being a Karen. Gosh. Over 90% of the country celebrates Christmas. And, and you know what that means? That means the vast majority of non-religious people also celebrate Christmas. Exactly. But do you hear us complaining? No. Do you think, oh, yeah. I think probably the majority of Democrats. The only people are, I hear crying are babies like you because people on business say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. There's a terrible yeah. Christian! There's a terrible Christian! Our, our Christian president is anti-Christian! How dare you acknowledge a day bet that you wish always you falls on Bet you wish you can call him a Muslim like you did Obama. And Don't you know racist about, about it, but you can't do that. They really want to say it, but they can't. can't. That's all from, from the Bible. I believe that's in Leviticus, right? Isn't it? Right? 
God, we want to say he's from Kenya again. Joe Biden has proclaimed Easter Sunday as Transgender Day of this building. What a coincidence on the timing, right? This is a direct... Oh, no, now, a, now, now we got a cabin. Ugh. I know, of course. Can you I mean, all look, shut up? If you scratch a little beneath the surface with these people, I would be surprised if they sincerely believe like, the White House to there's a long-term the effort. <laughs> Which is funny because them being cry like this is even going to make them even less likely to win. <laughs> To try to care. force your kids to become trans, try to make everybody become trans, to take down the nuclear family, to take down Christianity, and I just like. Oh, of course, that's right. Be in trans and gay's a choice, don't you know? That, yeah. I'm sorry, I have no sympathy. Yeah. I have no empathy. I don't want to hold their hand and walk them through to try to explain to them how what they believe makes. No We've sense. explained this to you guys for like 20 years now. I'm, if, I'm tired of having to explain this like every single episode. It gets annoying. Oligarchs and billionaires and multinational yeah. corporations who rig the rules in their favor and destroy. It's too much work for something so simple you should understand. Wars, and I'm supposed to be fucking yeah. concerned because we decided. So one I'll make day it simple. You have skill issues. March 31st. We apparently <laughs> acknowledge for two yeah. and a half seconds that yeah, you know, transgender people are human beings too, and I'm supposed to be outraged by that. I was supposed to be outraged. The Vecker almost me. Joe Biden just proclaimed that Transgender Visibility Day is on Sunday, March 31st. I wonder how he came up with this day. Vivek, oh. it was done since 2009. Can you shut up, you fucking idiot? And you're not even Christian. Why does it matter to you for crying out loud? Remember we covered a few months ago? Remember we came had to defend you a few months ago when you went on Trump's yep. face? Went after you for being like racist and made I mean mocked you for being Hindu and all that? You're not even Christian. Yeah. You're crying about this. How about you go shut mm -hmm. up? God. Yeah. Yeah, bro. yeah, bro. Yeah. Not that it's always on this day and happens to be the same as he. No. It's a nefarious plot to take down Christianity, even though he is Christian. All right. Um, I got. I got to show you one more. I got one more. This is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite. So here's uh here's Caitlyn Jenner. I oh god. Caitlyn Jenner. Formerly Bruce Jenner, himself. aka a trans woman. I am yeah. absolutely disgusted that Joe Biden acknowledges I'm human. I mean, I'm absolutely <laughs> disgusted that Joe Biden has declared the most holy of holy days. Hey, Caitlin, you know, you know, we don't, we don't like you at all. But th that is one thing you can't deny about us. Unlike your base who hates you, we actually acknowledge your humanity and all that. Whoa. We don't dead name you. We don't misgender you or anything. They do on purpose, and you still want to be on their side because you're an idiot and probably a grifter. A self-proclaimed yeah. oh, devout is. Catholic. No, That's and also self oh, and self-hating too. The only thing you should be declaring on this day is he is risen. Yes, shut up and worship our zombie Jewish carpenter. And, and you know what, too? I just remember just now. You are definitely a grifter because remember a few years ago she'd be like one of the few people on the right that would promote like LGBT rights and stuff like that, and now all of a sudden like the last year now all of a sudden she's being anti-LGBT rights. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Maybe you. We should have covered you on the um right wing grifter part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was a hippie and a pacifist, but we pretend have. he's a warmonger. Because okay. she is this what she's yeah. right I think like more broadly like. Blair, Blair, when we did Blair White, we did like, we covered people like Caitlyn Jenner. <sighs> we only have to go back to 2017. Hashtag oh, 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 how about that? I just mentioned Kyle's showing a tweet of her back in 2017 covering Trans Day of Visibility before I even knew what it was. Wow. Day of Visibility. There's no I better called visibility it. Than I told you all she's a grifter. by my side. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What a I can't believe I got proven right instantly what afterwards. A scumbag. So obviously it was so obvious. It always Jeez. falls on March 31st. She celebrated it on March 31st in the past. Mm. And now it's pretending it's mm. Does that sound like a grifter? This is the sort of culture war shit that I'm just I'm done with it. I'm done with it. If you I want to be done with too, but these Karens won't shut up. That's a you problem. Mm hmm. Oh, like I said earlier, you have skill issues. Exactly. Honestly, yep. if I'm keeping it real, I don't give a fuck if it was National Dick and Ass Day that <laughs> fell on Easter. Who gives a fuck? It's a holiday which has become secularized, and there's colorful eggs and bunnies and candy, and kids doing Easter egg hunt. It's fun. All that stuff or dying so Easter eggs like I do every and year. <laughs> like everybody celebrating Easter all day, every day is reading scripture and trying to act more like Jesus and like uh 
I hate to break the news to you, but if when I'm going to read stuff, I'm just going to go on the bike and read manga. How about that? Mm. <laughs> all the good Japanese down. stuff that you don't like so, because you're all racist. There you have it. <laughs> um, by the way, all these people, yes. gonna, I think Biden came out later on. You want to throw out the Jay slur. Like, suck it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, basically being like, fuck off. You want to bring back internments. Like, good. Yeah. I'm glad they did that. Um, and, and you know what the crazy thing is, too? It's like... Even just a virtue signal to say, like, hey, trans people are okay, they're cool. Even just that is like the sky's falling and melting. And yeah, oh my that's God, Karen level energy. And just remember, guys, I'm going to ask you this too. Did you know about this trans visibility day until this, before this happened? No. Nope. And neither did I. Neither of us knew anything about this day until you conservatives just cried about it now. If you all shut the fuck up and didn't say anything about it, no one would have cared. I wouldn't, we probably wouldn't even know if Biden even mentioned because it's just whatever. Like, you guys, where, where, where? it's, oh, that, like, what was that, um, Barbara, I mean, Barbara Streisand effect? That was mm -hmm. pro-trans. <laughs> Streisand <laughs> effect, yes. Like, Oh my god. Would you have people breaking out the AR-15s and... Now I do know about it. Like, and then what, what next year when you all are not going to cry about because it's not going to be Everybody an Easter. Oh, that's right. You're going to cry about being on 420. Everybody's way too fucking conspiratorial. Everybody's way too caught up. They've rage on Easter. Hey, y'all, do me a favor. Oh my god. I can't wait to see their crusade against pot next time instead of LGBT for once. So yeah, we got to say about them being Karens again for no reason. As always. It's not surprising. Like, not there's surprising. nothing wrong with LGBT rights and all that. Like, just stop. Just celebrate Easter or do whatever you want to do on that day. In the end, it's just a day. Nothing different about any other. It's just do what you do. We'll do what we do. And mind our business. All right. Well, that was very funny. But So, next. What's next? Uh, next is... Not gay Jared Suvit Suvit Now we gone. Now we can't laugh now because we got to see a sexual yep. predator again. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, guys. Remember the last year or so we've covered Steven Crowder and oh my god, all the scandals he had. His yes. meltdown with the Daily Wire, him being a piece of shit to his waifu, him sexually harassing all his male employees, and now we got another topic on that too. As his former employee, mm -hmm. not gay Jared, which is the stupidest name ever, but still gonna refer him because everyone's gonna mm -hmm. know what he is, is just suing him recently. And it turns out that he left working with him some time ago. And he had like the most overt NDF that is like unbearable and stupid. Because Crowder is such a Karen, such. And a sexual predator, too, mm -hmm. I may, must get, always add on. Oh, so, yes, yes, she is. And yeah. And he, and I'm not gay, Jared, listed even more sexual harassment in his suit. Oh my goodness. Let's see how terrible this is. All of the stuff going on between Steven Crowder and his wife. We had that very famous video that was released of an interaction they were having at their home. Watch it. Where he was Watch incredibly it. controlling and he didn't want to let her use the car to go to the store and... Smoke um, in front of her too. Manipulative and yep. when she was pregnant, remember? Divorced and mm -hmm. it's a whole nightmare, legal battle, all that stuff. But the other thing we've learned is that the way Crowder treated his staffers was kind of ugly, to say the least. And we've already Apparently, covered how, what he's done. A workplace or is a workplace that's just rife mm -hmm. with like frat boy juvenile Nut type taps behavior and whatever where he's stupid showing everybody crap his dick and wants balls to think and about. doing these demeaning skits. Mm -hmm. And apparently he has massive, massive anger problems, and basically everybody who's worked with him feels like he's uh, totally off mentally and is dealing with a lot of issues and um, very abusive. As we warned you all back when we first so started in 2019 that he's, well, now he's going to become out of the closet uh, or something, you know, and he just keeps getting more and more obvious. Dropped. Stephen yeah. Crowder for a very long time had a right-hand man by the name of Jared Monroe, or as they called him, Not Gay Jared. I know, now, I know Kyle is the stupidest name ever. As I point out when we bring this up. Mm -hmm. The first thing anybody's going to think if you call yourself not gay Jared is, oh, he's gay. Yeah, that's what I've been saying he likes to for like 10 it. years since I've heard his clown ass Multiple with that a stupid time name. On a daily basis. Like, not gay Jared. I would Jared. expect okay, Crowder anyway, to go I'm, by I a name get soon. Off on a side because we know you funny are. Enough, in, this, um, in this story, he, he actually is the victim. There's, I don't think there's any doubt about that. But Crowder and his new right-hand guy tried to raise doubt about that. So anyway... Um, apparently this guy, Jared Monroe, not gay Jared, he left Crowder's show like five or six years ago. 
And since he left, Crowder has put him through hell with all sorts of legal challenges and enforcing an NDA and trying to prevent him from working in most places in the industry and really doing lawfare against a former employee and trying to gag the former employee. Now, of course, the number one piece of speculation is like, well, what the fuck? What the fuck are you afraid of? Like, what are you, what are you, what are you hiding? Why is it so important that this guy can't utter a word about you in public and can't be in a similar field? Like, and apparently this is Crowder's M.O. This is what he does. He's vicious and he's ruthless Hello. against his uh, former employees. Karen level and energy and employees. a sexual harasser. Well, so I'm going to play for you. Jared dropped this video the other day and he explains kind of what's been going on. He starts off in the video by talking about how in the five or six years since he left, he's he's been getting a lot of like legal notices from uh, Steven Crowder's lawyers who are basically warning him, like, don't do this, don't say that, how dare you do that, and uh, also sort of shaking him down. He can't make money for his family, and he's he's really in a corner, and he feels like he has no outs. So he comes out and releases this video. Let's watch a bunch of it, then we'll react. These documents, an NDA. Some more context. I signed this separation agreement, an NDA, containing a strict and very broad non-disparagement clause many years ago. I voluntarily left my job after deciding I could no longer put myself or my growing family through the toxic and abusive work environment I had endured for years. Um, this place was and is to this day a workplace rife with sexual misconduct, uh, degeneracy, and aggression. The things I saw, the things done to me, and the things uh, I witnessed my employer do to others were disgusting, shocking, and utterly uh, indefensible. I have the receipts. This all took a serious toll on my personal health. Uh, to the point near the end of my tenure, the work environment had become so toxic that I had to be admitted into a heart hospital. And after many tests, I was ultimately put on anti-anxiety medication. This condition um, was something new to me. I had no history of it prior to my employment there and have never been treated for it since. Now, when I decided to resign, my wife was pregnant with our firstborn child. It was a terrifying position to be put in, um, but I absolutely knew that I could not be the husband or dad I was called to be for them in my current state. Something had to change, and if I couldn't change my work environment, then it was time for me to remove myself from it. Uh, I was fully aware that willfully resigning would mean I would forfeit any sort of severance. Uh, I trusted that God would provide. Um, what I had not anticipated is how much it would cost me to quit. This is where my first experience with legal abuse began. Uh, starting from the day I delivered my notice of resignation, I was put on the phone with company lawyers and the good cop, bad cop coercion campaign to get my signature on an NDA was well underway. I was told many lies throughout this process. I immediately hired my own legal counsel and uh, by the grace of God, understanding my predicament, uh, he even agreed to work for half of his normal rate. Even so, the legal fees immediately began to pile up. <clears throat> my former employer and his attorney argued I could not work in media anywhere in the world. Let's just reflect on that for a second. So he makes him sign an NDA, and as part of the NDA, he can't work in media anywhere in the world. Well, that's what he does. That's what he did. That was his career. That's what he knows. That's where his skills are. Can't anywhere in the world. No media. So right off the bat here, you got to ask yourself, why, Stephen? Why would you do this? And because he's a sexual harassing should Karen. Steven Crowder and yep. his company even be allowed yep. to do this to a former employer. I mean, you want to talk about an unfair system. You want to talk about an abusive. Remember when he cried about that he was being treated like a slave because Benny Boy wouldn't give him $50 million? Yes, I remember <laughs> the that. The irony after seeing how he's acted. Contrast. He's acting more like a slave master. I mean, this is, uh, yeah. this is brutal. And oh, vicious. that's probably what he and wants to be. And a sexual predator, too, I must add every time. Yeah. position whatsoever to tell this yep. guy you can't work in this entire fucking field the rest Here's of your the, life. My yeah. former... I'm going to say this right now. Stephen Crowder is so gay he is sucking dick in Narnia. Mm -hmm. He is that in the closet. Yep. Employer and his attorney argued I could not work in media anywhere in the world. And most certainly not in the United States for two years. You're going to see. He's about to explain. Then they kept adding time to it. Watch. Um, 
This is not because I involuntarily signed some sort of non-compete in my original employment agreement. It was because they decided a non-solicitation clause that was in said original agreement would retroactively be interpreted as the broadest and strictest non-compete one could draft. They told me my Twitter account, another potential lifeline to future work, uh, which I'd owned and been the sole manager of since 2009, was to be turned over to them on the argument that it was somehow their intellectual property now. That's a real dick move. Look, I work in this business, and if somebody who's an employer or somebody who you're like an independent contractor with, if they try to tell you that Twitter account that you created before you were even with us, that's your own thing, we're, we now want to take it when we part ways, that is like, it's astonishingly entitled. And again, it's like, why are you doing this? Why are you being so vicious? Why are you punishing him? Like, it's inconceivable. If somebody were to say that to me, somebody who either I worked for or I was an independent like contractor with, use, they were to like say, a, um, now you gotta hand over your Twitter that you had even before you were with us. It'd be like, <laughs> yeah. who the fuck yeah. do you think? Of course not. Not surprised because to keep he's a sexual predator. Team. People are going to keep playing every time. Trying to claim my personal yeah. production equipment, gear I had owned for years prior to working there as company property. Oh my God. Jesus oh, Christ. try to take his After stuff now. Every to validate my ownership. Yeah. A vicious lie that I stole from the company was born and disseminated by my employer. Uh, by the way, breaking their side of this bogus mutual non-disparagement agreement. Um, I have those receipts as well. All I simply wanted to do was peacefully leave. It was clear by my employer, though, that this was not only unacceptable, but that I needed to be punished for doing so. Being bullied on each of these terms and many more, fighting for my basic freedoms to leave and provide for my family immediately sent me into legal debt. I did not want to sign anything, mind you. Um, but the negotiations with my former employer left no question that without a signed NDA, my guaranteed silence, uh, I would undoubtedly be harassed well into the future. No matter if there are future claims against me for, or for where I worked or uh, what I did or what I said were legitimate or not, it didn't matter. It would cost me thousands and thousands to fight back, and they knew that. I had to make a deal with nothing but uh, a small savings account and my last paycheck. I had to accept the deal I could afford. It's very important to note here that, uh, where is it? It's here. I was not paid a single dollar for its consideration. Uh, which brings me to what you might be asking next. What was the reason I did sign this? And uh, again, as a, a man with his first child on the way, the uh, small victory I got from it. The primary reason I signed the NDA was for a small carve out in the non-compete clause, which allowed me to freely seek employment using some of my skill sets at another specific company. Uh, at least I could feed my family. That provision, however, was a lie. Um, and upon starting my new job at the new said company, I was giving another one of these, a cease and desist, and uh, was promptly unlawfully terminated from that, that position. Jesus Christ, man. He's literally just not letting him move forward with his life. I had a thousand more to for debt you. to fight back. My wife was very pregnant by this time, and without a financial safety net for groceries and a baby crib, much less a legal fund to I want, file a I can't wait to see what he's doing to his go, other former employees besides his sexual uh, uh, harassment point, we covered months that ago. That he did have a plan, and yep. was intended for evil. God used for good, and it took me years to pay off my legal debt, but the story of God's faithfulness in my life became a, a very large part of my testimony, and I am I'm just so grateful for the opportunities that he gave me, and... Uh, yeah, it's a story for another day, but um, back to this. <sighs> While my supposed not compete expired after two years, unfortunately, the most egregious part of my NDA, the part that silences my free speech, has no expiration. Mm -hmm. While NDAs are classically used to protect, uh, protect trade secrets, unfortunately, in the entertainment industry, they are too often used to protect disgusting, unlawful activity and many forms of abuse. We see mm -hmm. examples of this all the time. Powerful people and their attorneys routinely use NDAs to silence victims in order to remain powerful people. Didn't that happen a lot during the Me Too movement? Not yes, that happened, some, that happened to some degree. Free speech matters. It matters a lot to me, and that's not just a t-shirt slogan. It really matters. And these kinds of NDAs right here, stemming from this, are unquestionably unconstitutional. I will not live with the burden of this unconstitutional NDA over the head, over my head, for the rest of my life, especially when information I have can be used to aid other victims escape their own abusive situations, which is the context for which this employee feels they caught me breaking yep. my agreement. 
Let me be clear, what I'm afraid of is legal harassment in perpetuity, not the truth. Only one side of this ordeal is spending a fortune to hide truth and punish anyone who dares speak up for themselves or other victims. Remember, you will let me some rub my nuts all over you. NDA. Some of the things that other people who work for a number of people who work for Crowder have come out and had the same stories. There's, apparently, he yeah. like fucking when Jared was sleeping, Stephen Crowder teabagged him. Oh. You can't do Dude, that. Dude, you're supposed to do that only in <laughs> Halo for Cry Aloud. A college <laughs> frat house? It's sexual you assault, if house. anything, you idiot. Like, don't fucking do that. This is, you're a boss. God. Man, that sounds even worse than what we covered months ago. That's outright sexual assault. Jeez. Yeah. What's next? Team. You're going to rape them in their sleep? Oh, and, no. And I wouldn't shit, be surprised if that comes up. Of, oh, boy. Uh, it probably has raped. Right. Uh, uh, it was gross. At least his wife. Anyway, now he's going after... Stephen Crowder. And I, I don't know, my guess is trying to get some damages or something for the years and years of legal abuse. And so this is Jared's side of the story. Now, let's go to uh, this guy who's Stephen Crowder's new right hand man, the new not gay Jared, not gay Steve or whatever his name is. <laughs> I don't, oh, don't want to hear no simp. Oh, God. Hanger on, oh. little fucking Crowder sycophant. Lord only knows what this guy's doing with Stephen Crowder behind closed doors. Anyway, as per usual, oh, uh, Stephen right Crowder says, I'm going to go on the offense. Now, of course, he's not there, but he has his little uh, first mate <laughs> go out there and, uh, and make the argument. But here we go. So now this is them firing back. By the way, Let's hear this look camp. at how sloppy and fucking messy and dirty all this shit is. You know, for the longest time, we thought on the left, like, why are we always disorganized and a mess and at each other's throats and every lefty hates every other lefty and certainly in the media space, it's just like... It's a lot of nastiness well, going on. Are. But then at, it, at least apparently the, we don't sexually right harass position. each oh, other on like some people. We're about right to get right even dirtier yeah. and uglier and nastier. We're gonna be slitting each other's throats. You guys remember the whole thing with Stephen Crowder and the Daily Wire? The Daily Wire offered. That's Stephen how it Crowder all started, and we covered we've covered every single one of Crowder's Crowder moments for us to laugh like at. Exploitative and, and he's cringe a He's gonna stop that. So I'm a hero. I'm a hero. <laughs> Who can live on fifty million? Um. So now, anyway, they're going to fire back. It. Jared will watch some of this, and then we'll give conclusions. He asked you to contribute money for a lawsuit that did not exist. Unless he's had a lawsuit that he would like to file, which he indicated maybe that was the case. We had not sued Jared. We simply asked Jared to knock it off. We'll get into the timeline of that. <laughs> I wasn't suing him. I was just sending him cease and desist. And I was just telling him, don't take this job. Don't do that. Don't op open your mouth. Don't do anything that uh, might reflect mentality much? on us. Six yep. years after, six fucking years after you already left. What's so unreasonable about that, bro? But Tuesday, March 26th was the day that he chose to release his video. I wonder if it had anything to do with Wednesday, March 27th being the fifth day of mediation between Stephen and Hillary. Oh, now, oh, now, now we're going to bring that up. They were talking about the divorce yep. settlement crap. Oh, my gosh. Oh. The divorce thing now. Why oh, oh that's that's it. I remember he, now I remembered it now. That's the conspiracy theory Crowder has in his ilk that not gay Jared and his ex wife for cahoots to try and take Crowder down. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> the day before mediation. Mediation is a great opportunity for people to come together and resolve their differences peacefully. This is the fifth day. If you want to do some research on how many days it normally goes on during divorces? You can. It's not five. Here's the timeline. On October 27th, 2023, we this filed our original Rule 202 peti worse, petition that Jared worse mentioned. Worse and worse. Rule 202 petition is... Like I said earlier, how much you want to bet next time we cover it, it's going to come out that he raped one of them. Or his ex-wife oh, or whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. Bet, I bet it's going to be very likely. Basically saying, hey, we're serious. Almost certainly. Please knock it off and tell us how far this went. Knock what off and how far what went? He doesn't work for you anymore. He's not an employee. He's been gone for fucking years. You shouldn't have dick to say to him. He should be able to live his life, say whatever he wants, do whatever he wants. Six years. Freeze, uh -huh. peach, remember? Because we're really reasonable. And we said, sir, stop doing all the things that you're doing because you're a human being. How dare you? It's amazing. It's amazing. They released this video and thought, aha, we got him back. You look like all this is to defend your sexually harassing employer. Vultures and yeah. parasites. Damn! What did he do to you? And damn! How much did he fret? How much did how much did he rape and threaten you in the middle of the night to cuck like a clear closet case and a self hater? 
Uh, I don't October know. 30th, we sent a Probably cease a and desist. Bit. At that time, remember October this, 30th, um, 2020. This actually makes Crowder look worse. It, it, it just gets, every time we cover it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Three. Mm -hmm. All Jared had That's to do I'm not be surprised was next respond see, in writing be saying someone that next. he was going to knock off yeah. what he was doing. He was going to stop violating his agreement that he voluntarily entered into. Have you ever heard this thing called coercion? Yeah. And the, way, and the way not gay Jared described it, it sounded very much like coercion. He chose not to. I can't. All right. I literally can't listen anymore. <laughs> I can't. What, 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 what? The employee who we had six years ago, who we tried to fucking gag multiple times and sent a number of legal notices to trying to intimidate them into silence. What? That, now he thinks he has the ability to speak? Six years after the fact? What are you hiding, Stephen? I, look, I don't. I care raped what not gay Jared. That's the what. Industry mm -hmm. that we're talking about. Six years. Six years after he left, and you're still sending legal notices. I don't care if homie makes up stories and drags your name through the mud. What well, I thought you were the free speech, free speech, free speech, free speech. Mm -hmm. Unless you say anything negative about me and no, show everybody in the closet case, never then I'm going to sue you from now until the end of time. Six years later, if you left. Okay, so they go on to say the argument made by Skipper here. He goes on to not gay David. <laughs> he goes on to say, actually, what this is is a is a scheme. It's a plot by not gay Jared is now working with Hillary. Oh, I told you earlier. Who's the That's all I got now. Uh, now they're in cahoots somehow. And they're in cahoots. Oh my God! God down, Cap. Oh. Mm -hmm. He makes it seem like they're evil, mustache-twisting villains, nefarious people behind. <laughs> I mean, we saw the video, but Crowder did with Hillary last year. Or mm -hmm. Hillary knows some deep, dark secrets, and she has the right to does. expose them. Jared knows some deep, deep, dark secrets, and they have a right to expose them. And Mr. Crowder was a little bit out over his skis trying to gag everybody and intimidate them and use lawfare to try to force silence, ruin people's lives to try to force silence, and they fucking had enough of it. And they got together, and they started talking, and they realized this guy was a real abusive asshole. Maybe I should tell my story and you should tell your story. Maybe... We should try to get some legal remedy to the fact that we've been fucking harassed by him for years. So the eyes some nefarious plot where they're they're working to wrongly and nefariously smear his name. Or they got together and decided let's tell the truth and let's get some. Again, I would like to know how it's smeared when we saw the video of it to what yes. you've done crowd over the yeah. years. So in, in their it's not like of it's, the a, story, it's not Crowder. For us no info for C, we saw He's it. done nothing to anybody. But I, it. I'll Watch say it. to you, this is the final thing I'll say to you. Why should I believe anything coming from the person and the company that puts incredibly strict NDAs and non-compete agreements and legally binds people and tries to keep enforcing provisions six fucking years later? Yep. On that and alone, man, and once again, you have the proved yourself. To be uh -huh. incredibly unreasonable. And authoritarian would be a good word for that. So why should anybody believe a goddamn fucking word you say? Look, I have a show. This is what I do. There are some people who work for me. I couldn't, would never imagine in a million years even making somebody who works for me sign an NDA. Well, that's the difference, that's Kyle. Insane. You're not a sexual harasser but he not like only someone did that, you're talking to. Six years mm -hmm. fucking later, he's still threatening him and sending legal notices and cease and desists. Who the fuck do you think you are? So I've seen all I need to see. I'm sure Jared's telling the truth. I'm sure Hillary's telling the truth. I wish them the best because the fact I mean, we the saw the evidence what he did to Hillary on that video last year. Yeah. In front of the scenes. Watch it. Watch it. Working with this motherfucker behind the scenes. Could you imagine? Rape everywhere? This moody, uh -huh. over-the-top, repressed closet case who's abusive psychologically. We've already seen endless evidence of that with all the people who used to be on good terms with him coming out being Watch like, you it. motherfucker don't even Watch it. this guy, man. 
Oh. So. Um, not gay Gregory. I hope I hope it's worth it. By the way, really looking forward to the day where not gay Bob here leaves and he's got all the stories in the world about Stephen Crowder, right? Well, that's when what he to raped me on the set. There's there's a <laughs> there's a trend with people, and one person comes out and says X, Y, or Z. It's whatever. By the time you get two, three, seven, twelve, he's already gotten probably that many thing. already. You know, all these bridges. Mm-hmm. Not gay Jared. One. That's for Hillary. Sure. Two. All so, the, who who knows how many points anyway, we covered last time. Jared well. So he well. might already have twelve for crying out loud. I mean, he might have at least four. And by the way, guys, it's got nothing to do with politics. Put the politics aside. If Stephen Crowder was a lefty host and we had all these stories, my reaction would be the exact fucking same. Okay. I wish I could say that for a good chunk of left, but I got a feeling they would make excuses then. To Mm -hmm. force their employee to stop. And I I hate to say this too, but I don't think a lot of people on the left would cover this and only do it because it's Crowder, like one of the biggest far right dipshits so they can Mm. take him down. I bet if it was some some regular old man that was sexually harassing. Other men, I don't think they would talk about because a lot of people on left really do not like men as we've seen over the years. Yep. Oh my god. They would be saying that, um, that he deserved it because he's a man. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I had to deal with... Before we did the episode, I was watching one of Walsh's videos recently about how crazy like incels are in South Korea and oh my mm-hmm. goodness, there were so many people in this comment section shitting on men all the time. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. someone even said that there's no such thing as misandry. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to try to enforce it six years later. How do you think I felt when I saw that at a write down an essay? That's all I need mm-hmm. to know. You're a fucking scumbag. That's what you are. I was probably as mad as you when um, you saw the ABC the way, video. <laughs> at the end here? Probably, yeah. Probably that lunatic. Oh. Uh, hmm, I wonder if we should cover that very uh, soon in the future. Guy. That would probably require its own a people episode. policy project. Uh, I think he's now working with uh, Not Gay Jared, and they're filing a claim at the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, for the abusive practice. Oh, 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 oh Crowder. Something you don't like. Do. Regulations. Awesome. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait to see how this yeah. unfolds. Are they going to get you? For Crowder, that's for damn sure. No matter how much he tries to spin it as a nefarious conspiracy trying to I take me. <laughs> <it. laughs> or people telling the truth. They got a hell Regulation for the they win again? <laughs> <laughs> and then, hmm. And then when the cops get him, I guess he's going to go all blue, blue lives matter can kiss my ass. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. So yeah, what do you guys say about not gay Jared point out how much of a piece of shit Crowder is? Once again. Yeah. In other words, water's wet. Like guys, like I've, mm-hmm. I've said like every time we cover him, he caught me um Crowder, we cover him extensively in like I think it was the second episode where he did his socialism, you know, Nazis are, are left wingers and all that, remember? Yes, and, but yes. and remember we said Nazis at the end of that and clip are all left wing. And remember at the end of that clip we said how, we can't wait till when he comes out of the closet, and every time we keep talking about it, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer. I mean, dude, he sexually harassed all his male employees. Like, how much longer before we see him doing rape on one of them? Like, come on. Yeah. He's obviously in the closet. I don't know why he can't just come out of the closet and accept it. Self-hating, mis- misandrous piece of shit. And probably misogynistic, too, how he yeah. treated Hillary. Maybe he's, what's the term for hating humans again? Misanthropic or whatever. Misanthropic, yeah. Maybe he's one of those people, or maybe he's just a sex pest that probably needs to or go both. read. Maybe he should go read some, watch some hentai then if he wants to bust a nut. <laughs> At least that time it would be consensual and no one's harmed. Oh my god! So yeah, that was not a pleasant experience to watch. Already making fun mm. of Crowder. So what's next? Please be something funny. And that is. It's not earthquakes hitting Taiwan. There's no way I can even spin this for a laugh. So, anyways, a few days ago, Taiwan had a pretty big earthquake right off the coast of them on the I think it was north east side of the island. And last I heard, it was like a 7.7, which is more powerful than Ooh, the earthquake. That's powerful. That's more powerful than the one that hit Japan when we covered the beginning of the year. Remember? Mm-hmm. I'm actually gonna look that up because I haven't really looked it up since it happened where we did about the Japan one before we start the video. And I, 
haven't mentioned this yet, but like I think every single of the videos in this episode are all done by Kyle. Let's see. Where is the earth? Here we go. Let's see what it says. Oh, it's like almost smack dab in the middle of the east coast part of Taiwan. Oh. Thankfully, the, now, thankfully now thankfully, most of Taiwan's population is on the west coast because the other side of the mm. island is mountain. So hopefully it didn't yep. affect anyone. So right now... Uh, there's, a few, there's a few dead. I know of. In the, in, in so let's see. It says on Wikipedia, Ugh, it happened almost 8 in the morning. If that was me, I would be dead asleep. Oh, boy. So anyways, where's the magnitude? It ranges according to Japan's Meteorological Association. I'm going to trust them more because we know how much Japan gets earthquakes. So they're going to be on this probably better than us. If they say it's a, it was a 7.7, .7, which, like I said, was more powerful than what Japan got earlier in the year. And they've had aftershocks go all the way up to 6.4 for crying out loud. Wow. So right now, according to Wikipedia, 12 are dead, 1,100 people are injured, and a whole bunch of hundreds are still missing. Which, I think, if you think about it, that actually might be better in terms of casualties than even Japan did, I think, last yeah. I mean, I even looked that up again. But yeah, thankfully, not that many people died for... What was an even more powerful earthquake than Japan had? Jeez, maybe... Yeah. Yeah! I'm looking at Japan right now. When we cover it, they had 244 people died from that. Wow. Oh, oh my goodness. They had almost $18 billion in damage, too. Oh. Don't even say anything about Taiwan. Brutal. Sam, hmm. hmm. Japan, we we sucked your dick a few months ago saying how awesome your infrastructure is to handle earthquakes. Hmm. Maybe Taiwan has you beat. <laughs> Well, so, I think it also, like, hit near, um... Like I said, it hit the mountainous side, which Taiwan so. doesn't have many people on the mountainous side. Yeah. Most... And I think, ta um... Taiwan, yeah. basically, guys, it's just like Japan, like... Like, Japan's a very big country. Most of the population is centered in Tokyo. Like, a third of the population is in, like, the Tokyo Bay area. Like, it's yeah. mostly mountainous and all that. Like, there's not many people around the island. It's, like, very... Like, it's kind of like... A mix of, like, Europe and America. Like, America, we have, like, the East Coast and West Coast everyone's in, but the middle of the country, no one's there. That's how it probably is for you guys down there, too. So a smaller oh, extent. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All, most of our population's um, East within and West. 100 k's of the coast. Yep. And, and, like, and no one in the center and the north, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. We've got, so on, we've, got a, we've got some people in the north. It's just that um, Not Sydney and Melbourne are our two main population centers. Brisbane's pretty far up, and it's got a pretty salt, big population. I mean, your guys, bigger population city than my population city in my state, for crying out loud. You, like, mm -hmm. have a sixth of my state's population. <laughs> yeah. Remember that um, California and Texas have more mm -hmm. people individually than the entire mm -hmm. country of Australia. Mm -hmm. And Taiwan has about the same number of people that Australia does. And look how tiny they are. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I doubt they're going to do it right now because it happened so soon, but I hope this doesn't give China any funny ideas to try and do something after they had their earthquake. Hmm. No. Hopefully don't get any funny ideas. All right, but we've talked about enough of this. Let's get to the video now. So we had some pretty big news that broke last night. There was a colossal... Oh, yeah! That also reminded me. Apparently, in the earlier this morning or whatever, New Jersey had an earthquake. Mm -hmm. It was a 4.8, so that's almost like you don't even feel it. And, like, we almost never get earthquakes on the East Coast. But when we do, oh boy, we feel them very far on, like, West Coast earthquakes. Did you ever read up the earthquake in that v Virginia had in 2011 I showed you when we covered Japan's? No. I posted a link on it a few months ago. Man, when I hit Virginia, because that was a 5.8, I felt it. It was felt all the way down to Florida, all the way up to Canada from Virginia. Nice. Wow. Like, whereas yeah, stuff like in California. It would have been like threes. Uh, I think you remember. Yeah, we don't get earthquakes much on the East Coast. I wonder how it is for yeah. you guys. Don't really get it much in Australia. It's usually New Zealand that gets hit because it's on the ring of fire. Like Japan. Yep. Yep. And like let's... I said, um. But yeah, I remember one time I got my, I, I was just, there was things rattling a bit. And I'm like, what the, what's going on? Mm -hmm. That's how it was for me like, too when I was making lunch. Did we just have an, did we just have an earthquake? Sure, I played it at 3.7, pretty close to. Well, I'm surprised you even felt it. Usually it needs like four or five for us to feel. 
But yeah, there it is if you want to read again. But now let's get to the video. It was pretty shallow. Earthquake so... that hit Taiwan. Now, I've seen numbers sort of all over the map. I've seen everything from 7.2 magnitude to 7.7 magnitude. That's what Japan so said. And I'm going li uh, to listen to what Japan says. They're the experts on this. From different places yeah. that are sort of giving what they thought it was to the best of their knowledge. But uh, even if, if it's 7.2 or 7.7 .7, and anywhere in between, that is, uh, that's really, really strong. And so thankfully it's not the strongest. video to show you here. But yeah. then at the end of this, there's actually a silver lining and a really, really important point to make, which honestly I think is just an absolutely devastating argument politically for people to wrap their mind around. So, okay. First, let me show you this video. This was recorded on a bridge in Taiwan during the earthquake. This is incredible. Watch this. At freaking set 8 in the morning. Look at it shaking. Uh -huh. Jesus. And everybody's remarkably calm. Look how calm they are. And this is, like, I'm sure I, some of these and people... Like I said, I have no idea how common Taiwan gets earthquakes. I don't know if they're on, like, the ring of fire as much as, like, Japan. No, remember, Japan's, like, on four continental plates. They get, like, earthquakes yep. every day for crying out loud. That's why yep. they have to build up their infrastructure. We need, maybe we should look that up if Taiwan on bridge, is on a, the news a plate. From the U.S. that a bridge collapsed in the U.S. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that, too. And if, like, an earthquake like that happened... Our bridge would probably get destroyed because our bridges are not designed oh. to handle earthquakes. But then again, like I said, oh. just like you all, like if you got like a whole bunch of snow or something, you wouldn't handle it. If we got earthquakes in the East Coast, we can't handle it because we don't get that shit. On that oh. shit, I'd be just like how the, just like how we covered before, like the heat wave in Europe and like the Pacific Northwest yep. in America, they aren't built for heat like you and me are because we get those nineties oh. and hundreds common. Get <laughs> to the other side, uh -huh. thinking that the bridge might collapse. Look at this. Yeah, I'll probably be shitting myself if I was up there because. I've only felt yeah. earthquake one time in my life, and same sounds like for you <laughs> as like well. A, like when the shaking was really uh -huh. bad, people stopped. But then this is just a uh, Japan like, oh, and probably down. Taiwan <laughs> problem along the West <laughs> Coast. And there are other parts too. Wow. Yeah. Now, by the way, there was also really strong aftershock, 6.5 around there, aftershocks. Um, look, I got some more. Oh my God, I just realized so too. The... That was what Taiwan got was even more powerful than the Haiti earthquake in 2010. Yeah. Oh my god, and there was like up to 300,000 people that died in that one. Ugh. The skyline of uh, Taipei Taiwan. 101. Shaking, look at this. <laughs> this building, like, is on the brink of collapsing, but somehow still standing, even though it's like sideways. It did collapse. Right. It's just the part stayed Ooh. up. I wouldn't be surprised if the soil, I mean, um, road liquefied, which does happen with some earthquakes, yeah. people. Yeah. That happens in Japan a lot, too, where the soil, yeah. depending on what kind of soil it is, earthquakes actually liquefy even cement, so it becomes liquid. Yeah. And that causes... There are certain bits that are, and remember that a few of those could even be like, um, where the place itself either goes up a little or goes down a little and can move. Or oh, some last New Zealand earthquake, they moved 30 centimeters closer to Australia. And also, too, sometimes they might move side to side, too, to pound yep. the plate. It's going to be like sideways and about to collapse. I still have to look about. Does Let's see, are they on a plate? Oh boy, they are on the ring of fire oh, like Japan, not surprised. Yeah. Look at everything shaking in yeah. this house. Apparently, according to Vox, they get a thousand earthquakes a year. Wow. I wonder how much that is compared to Japan. Japan. That's that's a, that's one every day like Japan. That's more than one a day. Oh, wow. Many. The thought of feeling the world underneath your feet not being steady is like new nightmare unlock type stuff. I mean, imagine so you feel that for the first you. time like I did in 2011. When a, with a um, glass, with a um, drawer full of whole bunch of glass stuff around you, me behind you shaking like crazy. And not knowing what the hell was going so this on. This was in a, um, in a TV studio in Taiwan. During the earthquake, watch this. Again, you shouldn't be under there with all those lights. They could just fall off and probably give you a concussion or kill you. He's still doing a show. 
You should be more careful. She has balls of steel being on there with all those lights going back and forth. I guess journalists have to keep reporting news despite the danger. Just like meteorologists in America have to stay reporting okay. tornado warnings when tornadoes so now are this nearby. Also triggered a tsunami warning. Oh yeah. To this point, as of the um, Okinawa got hit by a tsunami somewhat too. The show. If you didn't hear that. Been. From the yeah, earthquake. Oh yeah, that's warning. right. I forgot. Since it hit the mountainous side, that means the other side, and up uh, in the west coast got a shit ton of mount me on landslides and such. Um, Ugh. It's about, about to like, kill more people. Is receding in certain places. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that did kill come, the majority of people. Just like the earthquake in 2011. Remember, people for Japan. It wasn't the earthquake that killed people. It was the tsunami that killed people. Verify those. I think some people yeah. watched, like older videos, and they were just sort of uh, trying to get retweets and clicks oh my, and oh all god. sorts of stuff. Oh god, god yeah. When people do um, old tsunami. footage and say, "Oh, this is the current earthquake," oh my god, can you all shut the um, fuck up? You stupid fucks. Of the earthquake, or just after the earthquake? Here's one right Inconsiderate here. bastards. It looks like the dust cloud after 9/11 for crying out loud in that video. <laughs> one more time. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, whatever town is in that dust cloud, they probably got obliterated. So the area where Taiwan is, similar to Japan, it's like in a very active fault line zone. And so, unfortunately, this is something that can happen. Now, the last time they had um, an earthquake of this magnitude, I believe, was in the 1990s. So it's been quite a while since they've had. Hey, there's like Japan had one. Power. The um, very, Kanto, very no Kyoto now, earthquake in '95. Remember? Uh, I don't know how many of you guys remember, well, but it wasn't and, that. And long according ago to that National Geographic, Turkey Japan gets about 1,500 an noticeable earthquakes every year. In terms of how mm. powerful. And noticeable means it has to be four or five because otherwise we don't really feel it usually. Seven point five. Well, 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 well this is gonna be almost, probably almost honest. Totally Japan identical. is probably having like earthquakes every moment. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's it one constant earthquake. It just varies in intensity. Yep. It's just got to be noticeable because it needs to be like four or five for us to usually feel What it. happened in Taiwan. And let me give you a little bit of what happened then to shed some light on the current... Hey, Kyle's doing what we do every time an earthquake happens. Millions of people. This was February 6, 2024. Millions of people across Turkey on Tuesday, on Tuesday mourned the loss of more than 53,000 friends, loved ones, mm -hmm. and neighbors in the country. And remember, guys... Turkey and Syria had a less powerful earthquake than either Japan or Taiwan. Just yeah. it was like in the sixth yeah. something, but they yeah. had fifty-three thousand dead. Yeah, Japan yeah. had two hundred forty-seven. Yeah. Taiwan right now has twelve because yeah. they build up their infrastructure and have yeah. standards, unlike if, Turkey. If, and if of course, is, ugh, if, Haiti. Ugh. Dude, if if um Haiti had like a magnitude eight earthquake, I swear the ground is so badly thin, part of the country had fallen to the ocean. I mean, we saw that they got nowhere near as bad of earthquake Taiwan or Japan had. I don't even know if they even had as powerful as Turkey and Syria, yet 300,000 people died. Oh my god. And they've never recovered still from that. I bet if a powerful earthquake came by, it probably killed like almost the rest of them, because that's how powerful, I mean, bad they are. If it was a, a powerful earthquake not only would probably wipe out the population of Haiti, but would probably sink part, again, Sink part of cause part of, part of the country to be knocked into the ocean. It was a 7.0, so it was more powerful than Turkey, but nowhere near as powerful as Japan or Taiwan. Mm. Catastrophic earthquake a year imagine ago. if they got so a, a imagine they got a uh, magnitude nine. There, that, there wouldn't be a Haiti at that point. That would probably cause tsunamis across the east coast and the Gulf too. Ugh. Mm. There's an article from 2024. Yeah, we'd probably see, um, and they're saying we'd, prob we'd probably see small tsunamis here. Probably would, um, probably would speed up the earth too, like Japan did. Remember, yeah. fifty-three thousand. And guys, I'm not kidding. When I said the 2011 Japan earthquake was so powerful it actually yeah. made the earth go was like one microsecond faster than normal or something like that. It actually sped mm -hmm. up Earth. That's insane. An earthquake making our planet go faster, even if it's yeah. something that we don't know. Is that's still unbelievable? That's how powerful this stuff is. People died in that earthquake, mm -hmm. okay? Now, as of the recording of what you're watching right now, how many people died in uh, this Taiwan earthquake? 
nine. Oh, pops up half the season. Now look, to be fair, well, like I said, if it's twelve when we just covered Wikipedia. That number is going to go. This a few days yeah, ago. We're pretty early. In the I mean, that's still impressive. Right still search and rescue going on, so that number will go up. There's no if ands or buts about it. Okay, but they say. Like I've been saying for years, guys, now, we need to get the Japanese and probably injured. apparently Taiwanese so, engineers look, it's very and infrastructure people and have them build our shit in America. So if we get thousand, earthquakes, we don't have right, to deal with this possible. shit. It could be over mm -hmm. a thousand. And probably you guys that, too. If they, but if as of right now, it's in nine. The wrong spot, we're probably, America would probably kill a million people. When was the last time you guys had an earthquake? Hey, what? Uh, Australia, or maybe your guys' part. Since I just since I just realized now that we had one just this morning. I wonder if how common are uh, I wonder if they're like uncommon like us on the East Coast. Because remember, it's usually like the West Coast, and I think like parts about, of about a month ago. About a month ago, actually. What was this? What was uh, three point five in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales. Yeah, New Zealand got. I mean, I'm not New Zealand. New Jersey got four point eight. I when was the last time you guys had a big one though, like above like? Oh, that's been a long time ago. Um, yeah. uh, we had a pair. Oh no, we actually had a big, pretty. Okay, so not in the Australian mainland, but we had a big one in um, had a six point seven at Macquarie Island, which is a big, which is big for Australia, by the way. Mm-hmm. Because we're in the middle of, uh, that's of same, our... Uh, that's thing, the same strength so. that Turkey had. And, of course, the most powerful one I know is that 5.8 that we and that I experienced. And I posted on the in the Discord for you to look at. And a little and a little more than 900 injured. Now, so, apparently, hate me. I'm, well, Taiwan well, handled it better in Japan. I'm stunned. A giant oh, discrepancy. That's the pretty earthquake surprising. Like almost completely identical. One hit Turkey, oh. one hit Taiwan. Mmm, Kyle, but that's that's very that's very very misleading. The one hit hate on um, Taiwan is much much smaller. Like it's six point seven, seven point seven. Guys, that is um, that's like hundreds of times more powerful. They're not even close to comparable. Mm. Yeah. It's not even close. It's not rocket science. Why is Taiwan uh, so exposed to earthquakes uh, and so New well Zealand prepared? Zealand has had to... a five point four in the Kermadec Islands. When was that? Whatever. I'm about to look that up now. But stand them. Kermadec so look at this. Islands are northeast of New Zealand. They're basically between New Zealand and Tonga. The earthquake hit in the middle of the morning rush hour, yet only slightly derailed the regular commute. Just minutes later, parents were again walking their children hmm. to school and workers Well, with the boat I mean, the Taiwan's bridge in Baltimore collapsing recently, maybe we should get you Taiwanese and Japanese to come over yeah. and rebuild the it. Since you all know what you're doing, apparently. Building codes, but of course, you yep. build it with earthquakes in mind, not freaking cargo ships hitting widespread it. widespread public education campaigns yeah. on earthquake safety. The government continues And Japan, can we not also abduct your engineers and infrastructure people to build your railroads over here? Buildings, can you imagine having Shinkansen across America? And offer subsidies <laughs> to or maybe soon mega labs? Resistance. So, in other words, yeah. the big difference between what happened in Turkey and what happened in Taiwan... And Japan, too. ...is government regulation. Especially Japan. Japan. That's it. Mm-hmm. As much as we shit on so Japan to show, instance, there's one thing we can't deny. Uh, they're good when it comes to handling earthquakes. And they're building shit. Making it so there aren't Which is why I enviously want them to come over here and build our shit. Die. And build the railroads too as a bonus. A, you know, 7.5 mm -hmm. earthquakes. I want you constant across America. In this case, in Taiwan, very similar, if not identical, earthquake. As of right now, nine people dead. Twelve now, unfortunately. Worst case scenario, it maybe gets a little over a thousand. Or something like that. I doubt we'll get a thousand so death like at this point. One fiftieth. What it was in Turkey. But yeah, that shows so because I Turkey and Syria are not don't have strong argument. building standards like Japan, I've Taiwan never do. Seen a better refutation uh -huh. of libertarian economics. Well, what else is new? Libertarians are always you know humiliated. Them. They're all about they're mm -hmm. masochists at this point. They're all about <laughs> <small> <laughs> remember, 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 remember. A few libertarian Lolbert Aryans became lefties, and all the rest became Nazis. Mm -hmm. Out of our lives, no red tape, no bureaucracy. Now, to be fair, are there areas where the government perhaps can be too big or too onerous, or there's too much bureaucracy or red tape? Sure. So you have to take everything on a case-by-case -case basis. I wonder how course. many people died. But when it comes in to something like building codes, for us. 
there is no, like, reasonable other side to the debate. Like, nah, laissez-faire, live and let live, totally unfeathered fettered capitalism. You do whatever you want, you build it however you want. There should be no rules and regulations around it. Are you out of your fucking mind? Wow, no one died when we had ours in 2011. Similar earthquake. You're sentencing 53,000 Kyle, no, 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 Kyle, no, 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 they're not the same, they're not the same, they're not even close to comparable. Not, what happened, Turkey's nowhere close to Taiwan or Japan. They're hundreds of times more powerful. Worst case scenario, maybe a thousand, right? Which is nothing to scoff at, but so many lives were saved because the government gave a shit about its people and came up with intelligent rules and then enforced those And it also rules. doesn't help that they get all the time, so they have and to yeah, deal with it. And yeah, if you're a building developer, it uh -huh. might be a pain in the ass from time to time when they come and inspect you and say, that thing's not right, you gotta make it better, etc. But Just like I'm sure you guys have to regularly prepare for wildfires and probably do it better than us lives. on the East Coast since we never get them. So and likewise, we get, since we get hurricanes all the time, we have to prepare for them better than the West Coast since they almost never get hurricanes and such. Uh -huh. ideology with libertarianism. Depending on your circumstances, you get used to it. Small government stuff. Like, just like just how you and me can handle the heat, unlike some people. Of that hands-off <laughs> approach. But I can handle the cold, unlike you. <laughs> the logical conclusion of intelligent regulations, it's this. Saving countless lives. I mean, uh, basically, like, earthquake-proofing your country is kind of wild, right? But they almost successfully did that. 23 million people? As we look at you very enviously. We're killed? Again, mm -hmm. like the size, only, thousand, there's only like three things I envy you, Japan. Scale, your anime and manga, it's, it's, it's your like trains, and your infrastructure. It turns out it's not a miracle. It's Other than that, you need to be Americanized in every single regard. Everybody <laughs> should support. All right, guys. That's the show. Oh, oh my God. So, yeah. yeah. We got to see about that. It sucks what happened in Taiwan, but once again, regulation and building codes for the absolute W. Oh my god, what? I just remember now. Oh no, do you remember what Sam Sears debated some libertarian about building codes and they brought the Haiti earthquake? Oh no! Yeah. Oh no, yeah. I just remember that! Yeah. Oh no! Oh, oh no! Why do yeah. you guys make it so easy for Sam? He didn't even have to try putting any effort in. It was just that simple. Oh, oh, oh my God. I was so sad watching Sam put no effort into humiliating him. If you're going to debate him, can you give Sam Cedar some effort to try? But again, you guys are libertarians. You can't put any effort into yeah. it. So yeah, we got to see about what happened to him. Oh, God. It's, it's sad that it happened, but the fact that Taiwan's done so well is... Very envious. Mm-hmm. Because I guarantee you if that happened, a 7.7 .7 on the East Coast, we would all probably be dead. Because we can't handle that shit, unlike the West Coast. Mm. <laughs> all right. So now, on to the next topic. And that is... Uh, or would be... Stephen A. Smith destroys Hitler a Ugh, and I don't like Stephen A. Smith. He's an idiot when he was mm -hmm. on... Um, ESPN all the time. Oh my god. And his buddy too. His name won't come to my head now. But Stephen A. Smith, for the first time in a long time, actually said some base things for once. So, of course, Hillary Clinton went on one of the um, late night shows and he, and I can't remember who it was talk about how how, how do you come up and talk to people who don't want to vote for either Trump and Biden or, Biden or all that and they really are not happy about it. And she was like, deal with it. Too bad, and stuff like that. Those are your choices. Get mm -hmm. over it. Like, she said, like, in the most oh. condescending way possible that makes you, like, and this it, it really sounded a lot like voice. And I'm telling you, people, oh, as yeah. someone who really doesn't want to vote for Biden, but is forced to because of Trump's big fat mouth recently, you're not going to convince people of that argument. If anything, you're going to make people vote, mean, go against what you want, just to fuck you, to say fuck you. Like, what you said was, absolutely horrendous if you want to try to get people to do what you want. And Stephen A. Smith said, like, the most progressive thing as possible, which is incredible. Like, guys, just so you know, this is how dumb he was before. He said years ago that blacks should vote for Republicans at least once just to get out of the way that they don't vote oh. for Republicans. Oh. Yeah, remember that? Kyle covered it back in 2014. Like, he's really stupid when it comes to sports, but man, he says some weird takes when it comes to politics. I'm just, uh -huh. I'm just so glad he, he and his buddy, guy, his name won't come to my head right now, are not really on ESPN anymore. Oh my god, I hate watching them on ESPN. So yeah, let's watch this. Alright guys, it's time to talk about my favorite centrist. 
Look, I'm a, I'm an open-minded guy. I like hearing all sorts of different perspectives. Skip Bayless. Um, there we go. Oh my, my God. Hearing those amazing. two when uh, they had their show together on ESPN, all the they did was try and moan about you're, you're everything on sports like, related. Even if you disagree, and they didn't even know what they were talking about NFL related. This is really interesting. He's so charismatic. I love this. So anyway, he um, he went on CNN. He's doing a lot more political stuff in his own podcast now, so he's more comfortable going on all the news outlets and you know they'll do an interview about whatever. So he's going to be asked about that clip of Hillary Clinton, where Hillary Clinton basically said when she was on Jimmy Fallon's show, asked about, hey, what do you say to people who are struggling about Biden versus Trump, et cetera? She's like, get over yourself. This isn't a hard choice. Get over yourself. Very smug, very condescending. Well, very it is a hard agony. choice. Like shaming oh, people. Very hard choice. An argument or anything I'm like not that. even looking forward to bone threats seeing old man, but because of Trump, open his big mouth, I'm so forced to. Stephen A. about this. Like I said, look, Stephen A. But a lot of people on the left that don't care about the Russo-Ukraine war as right. much as I do, so left, to them, that's not enough for them. And, it, and of course, the Israel Hamas war is enough to keep them away from him. But, but you're a neocon, so you don't care. I don't think it was a very wise statement on how, how did that work out for her in 2016. I think. Bam! Right off the bat. Brought up 2016. Because oh. that is exactly why you lost. Because you were such yep. a smug little piece of shit that turned all progressives like me away, and you actually are what? so hated that you got people to actually vote for Trump to keep you from winning. Like, exactly, that's how hated yeah. you were. And it's this attitude that you had, there's a good reason why you lost in 2016. That's something that we have to recognize. Yeah. Yes, she won the popular vote, but at the end of the day, it's she also because she's, a, a, un, she's unlikable, and e mm -hmm. unlikable and insane and evil. That's just your misogyny talking, remember? <laughs> I'd, say that, I'd say that about her. I'd say that about... Her fucking husband. Or um, other guys as well, uh, men as well. The orangutan. <laughs> what? States. It was him. You can look at her not campaigning in Wisconsin in the last days, not campaigning in Pennsylvania in the last days. You can look at some of the stuff that they were saying about her that sort of distracted things from where it should have been in terms of Comey and his report uh, from the FBI. You can bring up a whole bunch of things, but at the end of the day, the last thing you need to do is to do anything that could agitate a potential voter in this particular but election. What do you make about the actual argument that she's making? I mean, she's basically saying two old people, yes, yes. but they're substantively different. I mean, Absolutely. Trump has well, 91 listen. counts against him. Well, listen, nobody's not, brought that up more than me. Uh, for, yeah. you know, four indictments, 91 counts, impeached twice. I'm not voting for him. I've said that to a lot of people. I've said that to you. But at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, is that at some point in time, you've got to take into account what the voters thinking about. The voters, a lot of them out there, tens of millions of them out there, by the way, don't care what he's going through right now. They yeah, don't they, care a lot of people don't care if Trump's going through indictments on. They don't they care. Don't the 91 care. Counts. Oh. They're thinking about their lives. Oh. And a lot of times we see They're seeing Biden right now that in office for years now can respect and they don't feel like stuff's getting better even though all the economic indicators say everything is going swimmingly if they don't feel it then they don't care and they're gonna blame you for it and therefore they might not vote for you some of them uh -huh. might just vote for trump but it's if Biden lose it's gonna be more people not voting for him than voting for trump uh -huh. it's pretty much like i remember he's like just about he's like on the edge of losing of at least losing michigan purely because of Israel, Palestine, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. When you do stuff that people don't like, they don't like. Uh, but Trump, that's not going to work with them. Like, the, there's like only one person besides Kyle on the left that points this out, and that's um David Dole. And he, mm. it's like he's like the only one that regularly brings this up and all that. That like vote shaming ain't gonna work. Their candor and their honesty, mm -hmm. they do seem a bit detached at times from what the voters are actually Sounds like Bush when he's talking now. Actually thinking. Nobody yep. wants like, to hear that. Yeah, it sounds Biden like a CIA agent Bush. Time because especially if you're Joe Biden, what are you really, really worried about right now? You're worried about folks coming to the polls. You're worried about them showing up to the polls to vote for you. You're not worried even about them voting for Trump. You're worried about them not showing up to vote for yeah. you. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what's gonna cost Biden to win. People not show up to vote for him. All right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't exactly encourage them to get up out of their seats. God damn, son. <laughs> Can I get Where's more of this ship, Hillary? Smith, Jesus please? Oh, wow. Stephen A. Smith, please? He's exactly right. Can he be smart exactly with sports right. for once yeah, again? Set it up like oh, that's right. He's never been smart with sports. Along with like, Skip Bayless. Like, like, oh, my God. All the bad memories that he heard of the NFL. That's not what you have to worry about, numbnuts. 
what you have to worry about is staying home or voting for Jill Stein or Cornell West, right? Like, that's what you need to think about. And that attitude of like, please shut up and get over yourself. It's like, she literally said, get over yourself. Well, that's uh -huh. not going to address their concerns. And something Stephen A. didn't bring up, but it, from my perspective, is probably the most important thing is, who are these people really who are making the most noise about Biden right now? Who have organized the uncommitted campaign in a bunch of the different states that are now voting uncommitted in the primary? Uh -huh. These are all people who are screaming about the same issue. Gaza. The United States is arming and funding Israel as they carry out an ethnic cleansing and a genocide in Gaza. Over 40,000 Palestinians dead. Over 15,000 of them. And guys, just to put this in perspective now, this is not the fish. I mean, this is not the actual number because there's no way to confirm this because Russia has the territory under control. But to put this perspective, oh. officially, Israel, I think, has killed almost as many civilians in the last few months, as Russia's killed Ukrainian civilians in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. now, like I said, that's definitely not accurate. If we went through all the territory that Russia has, it's probably into the hundreds of thousands of civilians they've killed. But right now, we yeah. don't have that info. We can only go by official numbers. Israel mm -hmm. is killing as many people as Russia has officially. Like, you can't yeah. just spin that and act like you got vofers. No, that's enough to turn people away no matter what. Our children, do you really think your smug-ass attitude is going to override people's concerns about our money arming and funding a genocide? You really think that the point that Hillary Clinton made, people are going to look at that and go, you know what, she's right. I no longer care about the lives of Palestinian babies being carpet-bombed. Please. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And uh, they really need to take Hillary Clinton and just... Make sure she's not in front of a single freaking cat. Same goes for Nancy Pelosi. Guys, I'm telling you. Yep. Pelosi, Hillary, and all these people are so actively politically toxic that they'll turn people away just by them talking. Just yeah. shut up. Their and existence mm -hmm. turn, their existence has cost Biden 200,000 votes. Yeah, especially you too, Pelosi. Like, you need to go too. All you yeah. really toxic, odious people that turn everyone away, go away. The Democratic Party would be so much better if you just went away forever. Camera between now and the election. Because that is the worst. It's like an anti surrogate for Biden. There's like surrogates. Yeah, you're actively there, you hurting Biden. Biden. Then there's the anti surrogate. Yes. Every time she talks, the, Biden loses. The protesters more that want him to stop Israel from doing their genocide. They're doing the thing that would help Biden win for crying out loud. Yes. So if Biden, if you it want, allows, it would allow get Michigan back. Yeah. If you want Biden, if you want to win, force Israel to stop doing their genocide, and your polling will look much better in comparison. Voters. Like that's right. like that is the one issue that could keep you from winning for crying out loud. That's like the yep. one issue. Get rid of that. You're probably going to win guaranteed, almost. That's the now vibe you I can't get even it. guarantee that necessarily. Although I still think you right. will because Trump's she's problems are worse she's, still. The last yes, person on so earth I'm... who can make the arguments that she's making. She hasn't learned anything at all from 2016. That's what they Never has and never will. By the will. way, her saying get over it. I mean, if she was she smart, if, if she was smart, she could probably make the argument because a lot of people on the left, like even Varshtam have made this argument. It's a lot better. It's, it's, it's a lot better than what Hillary said. It'd be like, look, we know Biden is very bad on like the Israel issue, but if Trump wins, he's going to be worse on this issue. Which he would. But that's a lot better Whoa. argument than she has yep. done. But of course, yep. that's still not going to be enough for a lot of people because Biden's actively doing this shit right now. Trump's not, so it's just not going to work the same way otherwise. Or get over yourself. Like if she rich, made that argument, it would probably be a lot camera, better. She's whining and bitching and moaning about losing in 2016 and blaming well, 78 so things that are not Hillary Rodham Clinton. Sexism. Okay. So the last person, right. the last person who can make that argument. Okay, so at this point... Uh, so I'm looking at 270 to win. Um, nationally, it is basically dead heat with 12 to eight polls. Trump's only up 0.6%. At this point, uh, Biden's Michigan's gone. Biden's holding on to Pennsylvania. Trump's torn away um, Ohio. Well, that's been the case. Uh, neck and neck in Wisconsin. Ohio's uh, been the case for the last two years. not looking good. Uh, I could probably run the num I'll try to run the numbers here. Um, I'm gonna try. I'll, you can keep going. I'm gonna try and run the numbers here. 
Because right. I think... But remember all the idiots that said that, oh, Trump's going to guarantee win now, like, several months ago. Now it's, like, tied up. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's why I said before, guys, you shouldn't trust polls this far out. Anything could change. And again, remember, Stephen A. and I don't share the, don't share a political philosophy. He's a centrist. I'm a lefty. He's an idiot on sports too. Here against uh -huh. Hillary, yeah. which is like, hey, you're not helping. Uh, you're not helping. Uh, that that's undeniably uh, true. And the sense you get from his argument is, uh, you're gonna have to at least uh, pretend to give a shit about what your voters want, guys. This is the massive difference between Republican politicians and Democratic politicians. Well, the Republican corporate Democrats. politicians, yeah. honestly, are terrified uh. of their base. And they're often bending over backwards, trying to accommodate their base, trying to say the oh, things that their base oh, wants to hear. Oh, Honestly, okay. it's so at much. At this point, at this point, if it was run, Trump barely falls over the line. He like falls over the line. He gets to like barely two seventy. Yeah, it'd be like one of the closest elections ever. So yep. it's to a fault. Because then you get the craziest, most psycho extremist motherfucker on the far right, and you have a lot of well, mainstream yeah, Republican yeah, politicians. Yeah, uh, it looks like it, uh, with Wisconsin's neck neck, which could be enough to be like Biden just scraping the thing. But yeah, at this point, um, Biden has lost Michigan. And he has no one to blame but himself. Politicians. Who yep. And I don't want to hear yeah, people. He blame but himself. I can't wait. He's losing one average of about three to four points. I cannot wait. So when the election comes up, I still vote for him. Trump wins, and I'm going to be blamed for it too by people like Bosch and all that because I point out it's Biden's fault. He even, lost. Though, even though Bosch, <laughs> even though it's Bosch who's the reason why um, why Trump lost. I can't wait to be blamed. Like I was, oh my god! I even point out I'm going to vote for that senile old man, and I'm still being blamed for him potentially yeah. losing because I'm not evangelizing or working hard enough to try and get him Vic win. No. Go fuck off. That's his job to try and get people to vote for him, not mine. To their ideas, right? That's the right. On the Democratic side, they despise their base. They hate their base. Democratic politicians aren't scared of their base. They're not terrified of their base. They're not constantly bending over backwards to do what their base wants. Democratic Party politics is built on despising the left-wing base and constantly and repeatedly going further and further right and trying to get the moderate voters, the Nikki Haley types, the anti-Trump Republicans, the suburban people. Not, like that, that's what it comes down to. Enablers of the alt-right. So in other words, the base, it's just, they like, just like grandfather and like, fuck you, you're going to vote for us like, anyway. We're not even going to pay any attention old. to you. And then they get mad when the polls come out and it's like, hey, your base is not happy. You need to do something to serve them. It's get over yourself. You want to dig your hole deeper? Fuck By all means, go Democrats. right ahead. You're, you're the, never going to you talk your way the out of the are losing because you're, you're you guys are fascist minutes. enablers. Yeah, enablers are fascists. The main concern of these people is we are arming and funding a genocide, and Joe Biden is aiding and abetting it. Your best way out of this is to immediately get him to change course. Cut off the money, cut off the weapons, condemn Israel at the UN, have him make a phone call, say, sorry, but this is done, this is over with. Sanction top Israeli officials. If you want a Do real all that fundamental and change. Everything will the completely change, and Biden will be Arab almost Americans guaranteed the win. Uh, I'm Americans telling you all right Americans now, that is the Biden's one thing that's going to keep him from winning. Fix that, he and he's guaranteed the win. Derision, adding to their long track record of scorn and derision. So, spot on. Stephen A. absolutely obliterated her. Fun to see. Hey, y'all, do me a favor. So what do you guys say about Stephen A. Smith being, like, based for once in his life? Why can't yeah. we get that? Oh, my God. Yeah. That... That almost single-handedly made up for all the cr cringe and suffering I had to deal with the last 10 years with him and Skip Bayless talking dumb shit about NFL players and teams and such. And I can't yep. wait to... And then I'm going to find her shit from 10 years ago and I go, oh, not again. So yeah, we got to yep. see about that. Obliteration. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, like I said, Hillary and all you clowns, go away forever. You actively hurt the Democratic Party by just your mere presence. Yep. Go away. And Biden forced Israel to stop their genocide of the Palestinians. Or you and, will lose. Yeah. You can, or you can, you can and you lose. have no one to blame but yourself you if you yourself. lose. I don't want to hear it from Bosch and other Karens like you yeah. if Biden loses because of me yeah. and other people that don't want to vote for him. That yeah, issue is enough, yeah, that that enough to cost them. Like Deal with it. Bosch to say anything because, he's, again, he's a loser.
I can't wait to, like I said, I cannot wait to be blamed, even though I'm going to vote for a senile old man. That's my fault somehow. Just like I was personally right. responsible for Hillary losing and Trump somehow almost yeah. winning my state. <laughs> God, these mm-hmm. guys are wackos. All right, so now yep. on to the next topic. And that'll be... Cargo ship crashes into Baltimore Bridge. Oh my god, the fucking million and one conspiracy theories. Ah, we're going to get to that. How funny. Yeah. But we potentially both have something that both affects you and me. Well, maybe mm-hmm. you if we cover it, ABC. But this one affects me. So, I think this happened like the day after we did the last episode. So, in the middle of the night, a cargo ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore and collapsed it. And that's been like two weeks ago, and I don't think it's been clean up since because it's such a massive destruction all that and fine enough despite being a marylander i never even knew about this bridge till just then goodness and apparently it's a huge bridge for like travel between like new jersey and new york down to dc so it's oh god as someone who's going used to go for like Baltimore like every week you go on the highways oh my god traffic's horrible and such oh, oh, no, oh no. you have it's i don't know how it is in adelaide but i'm telling you Baltimore traffic is really 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 bad and I know for first-hand experience, especially when I've gone to Ravens games. It is horrendous. You could be stuck on the highway for hours. That's how bad it is. Mm. Oh, my God. I think I would have probably seen the bridge, too, on the highway, because it's right on the ocean, I mean, on the, in the mm. Chesapeake. So, yeah. Now, I might look this up, too. Since it's been a few weeks, unfortunately, six people have died so far because they were working on the bridge as it's happened. And the sh- apparently, so far we know, the cargo ship lost control somehow. And it crashed into the bridge of support beams. And mm-hmm. the cargo ship said beforehand when it happened, I mean, they warned like the um, bridge that they don't have control of the ship. So they warned people. Like they closed down the bridge. They tried to get people off. So good thing that wouldn't happen because who knows, maybe more people would die. And it's a good thing it happened like at one in the morning instead of, oh my God, during rush hour and such. If, if it's as busy as everyone says it is, that could be like hundreds if not thousands of people that would have died. And of course, since the bridge collapsed... That's going to majorly affect travel between the states. And also, it's probably going to be fixed sooner, but it's going to cause major shipping issues because apparently, I didn't know about this because I thought Baltimore was pretty much dead, that it's like one of the biggest shipping ports on the East Coast, to my stunned surprise. So you know what that means? Yay! Delays and price increases for all of us on the East Coast. Let's go! Yay! So yeah, that's very nice and all that. As I'm looking up right now, Six dead, of course. Yeah, that bridge was made like 50 years ago. No wonder it couldn't take a hit and all that because they weren't designed to take hits from these giant ass ships and such. So, yeah, it's going to take probably months, if not years, for this bridge to get rebuilt. And I don't want to hear fucking Karen Republicans saying, uh, too expensive and all that. I don't want to hear it. You do it, you shut up and do it. Uh, your existence is too expensive, Republicans. Mm hmm. So, yeah, that's very unfortunate. So, before we get into that stuff, before we get to the other stuff you mentioned, we got to say about this so far. Uh, pretty disgusting. Pretty Un- terrible. Unfortunate. So, yeah, I cannot wait to deal with the um, expenses the next few months and years because of this. So, yeah, that's all that. And then, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The amount of conspiracy crap we had to deal with for the last oh, two weeks. Oh, yes. And, then, oh, my God, you see it, too. All the racism I had to see, too, about Baltimore, oh, too. Oh, yes. That their mayor is a... What was it? Um... DEI higher. I'm trying to remember the exact te- yeah, term. Diversity, yeah. ex- what was it? Diversity exclusive, it, 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 exclusionary. I can't remember the term. It's a new stupid term to replace like woke. Basically, they're racist and they think anyone who's like a black bear diversity, is racist. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yep. Yep. Diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff. Oh my God. The amount of crap. Mike did a video on this I wanted to cover because he goes more into depth on that, but Kyle's is shorter and it covers the other things that Mike didn't cover. So yeah, oh my god, they blamed, like, every, pe- these idiots on Twitter blamed everything for it. Race, I mean, they blamed minorities for yeah. this. They blamed, believe it or not, Ukraine and Russia for this. Because <laughs> yeah. somehow Russia is able to control ships somehow. I don't know how, ask them this, mm-hmm. this crap. And it's Ukraine's fault because Ukraine's angry about not getting aid. Yeah, if Ukraine did this, do you think they're going to be less likely to get aid or more? I think they're going to be less likely. That would probably yeah. almost guarantee America not you giving know, them aid. The Republicans are going to be like, 
They've got, they attacked us. We must drop nuke on Ukraine. Somehow blaming um, Hamas for this. Yeah, 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 sure. Yep. Immigrants. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's funny, too, that they blame Ukrainians for this, since apparently the crew are Indians. So how I have not seen them blame India for this yet. Hmm, that's a little mm -hmm. weird. So, yeah, this is so stupid, and the amount of bullshit I didn't deal with, plus, plus people trash-talking my state, which you never trash-talk a Marylander about their state. Very, very, yeah. very bad things will happen to you. Like, you know how nice Dylan Burns is. That's the Marylander here. Yeah. You don't want to piss off Marylanders, because we will rip your new asshole, like Hunter and me. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Now, for me to get boiling mad like you did with ABC. So I told you guys uh, the other day, oh. my crazy And fuck you on that comic ad I see on the side of Kyle's video. Go fuck yourself. Uh -huh. I was supposed to be on that bridge on that day. To be fair, I would have been, you know, five, six hours before the actual collapse. Uh, so That's amazing survived. how Kyle could have been almost but killed in that. It's crazy to think that I was supposed to be mm. on that bridge on that day. I put off my trip to New York to the next day because I was tired and I just Yeah, because this bridge like, oh, allows like travel in between states, whereas the um highway of Baltimore goes into the city pretty much. And oh my god. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you do not want to know how bad traffic is in Baltimore. It's really, really, really yeah. bad. You and could be uh, on the highway stuck there for hours. The morning, I'm not kidding. That option wasn't even available mm -hmm. to go over that bridge because it no longer exists. I can only I imagine how bad traffic is for you. Uh, on 95, I-95. Um, since you're, since Adelaide's bigger than that, that was wild. But mm -hmm. uh, there's been a bunch of these stories brewing now. Where apparently fucking everybody online has colossal brainworms. Just, I mean, the the dumbest, most insane yes. conspiracy theories, blaming the most ridiculous things. Me looking much. at that comic strip of the is making me a more, a very, more very, very angry. Ideal example of an accident than what happened with that. Bridge. They deserve to have the Maryland flag yeah, slapped across their face for that this strip. Giant ship. So they made oh. it. So the wind was affecting them a lot. They dropped anchor following protocol. They dropped anchors. Mm -hmm. One anchor hit the ground a little too soon. It shifted the direction of the boat and ended up hitting the bridge. All it took was a little love tap for that bridge from the 1970s to come crumbling down. So, classic example. Alex Jones was out there like, eh, this looks intentional to me. What Shut the, the fuck, fuck up. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. What are you talking People just say shit. They just say shit. There's no. I'm just oh my god. That just reminded me. Did you ever see the comment I posted on the server a few weeks ago when Matt Walsh was blaming minorities for the bridge collapse? And someone literally said, the mayor of Baltimore looks like a gorilla, and he's black. Oh, uh, yeah. I literally would just be like, um, oh, God. But that's not racist. I, don't if I, say, I would have actually, if I had remembered, didn't remember to say that, I would have been like, just say the end slur, mate, you racist P.O.S. What if I Just told say the end slur. What if I told you why I called them a racist for that? I had a whole bunch of idiots saying it's not racist somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fun morning to wake up dealing with that for like three hours straight. Mm -hmm. It's gonna like um, my mouth is gonna move and sounds are gonna come out. Am I attached to it, that? That making sense? No. <laughs> like this is this is how people act. So uh, now we're gonna go through a list, a list of the things that were blamed for the uh, the bridge collapse. And the boat hitting the bridge. Okay. First, we go to the Stone Talks comic guy. He's a far right extremist. Now you're Apparently seeing the coast and ice saw. Uh, and there was, it was a big mm -hmm. thing on left Twitter. But this guy said, here we go, the cartoon. But our economy needs more foreign workers. Boom. Bridge collapses. Yeah, because it's foreign workers, so people. So apparently, foreign workers are to blame. Okay, next. This guy oh, says... Oh, China Chinese now! China's ship. fault, guys! Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so now... Racism, here we go. Um, mm -hmm. The lockdown, all right, gotta hear this one. Oh, you know, it's I COVID's fault! Oh! Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you stop, mm -hmm. please? Please, can mm -hmm. you just stop? Like I said, yep. you all need to have Maryland's flag slapped across your face for your stupidity. Stop! Mm -hmm. Just said, stop, look at our stop, stop, stop! Stop, stop, stop! I, I'm one yeah. of these people that believes we've never fully Look, I know you want to get slapped the across the face by the best state flag the in the country, but <laughs> just stop. The COVID lockdowns came up in a discussion about the bridge collapse. We got this idiot. I, 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 swear, I don't know what it is, but the last year or so, the right is like so desperate to bring up like COVID stuff again. I don't know what it is. COVID's yeah. not, not even a, pretty much a threat anymore. It's almost endemic, and you guys are still talking about it. Yeah. Blaming Hamas. Okay, yep, here we go, Hamas. Of bridge collapse due to the yeah. Main yeah, because Hamas is so busy dealing with Israel that, that they have time to do this. Intentional. 
I worked several. I worked several Al Qaeda Hamas cases while in the FBI, and since and found verified by state intelligence agencies, Al Qaeda and Hamas targeted key bridges to shut down ex fill abilities so they could conduct significant level follow on attacks. This may be that, or this may be an accident. I lean strongly towards not an accident. The fact FBI yeah. DHS say it is not terrorism is a key indicator. It is. How about oh, shut up? Been wrong 100% of the time. Yeah. They initially say it's not terrorism. Homie's really blaming Hamas for. Can't wait to deal with. See the, the people that had to deal with out in Western Maryland blame immigrants for this class. or some crap. These people don't mm. even Just wave that the racist flag, flag high. Happened. We know you want to secede during what the Civil the War, but yeah. Yeah. sorry. What about the Mayday call? What about the dropping the anchors? What, what are we doing here? Everybody Be gone, lost, lost cause. Is this just like a hot takes economy? Yep. Where everybody cares so much. Oh my god, attention. Give me attention. Give me, 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 give me attention. Give me attention. Give me attention. Do people care so much about attention? They're just like, I'll say the most insane shit. Why not? Hamas? Hamas is not even in position to repel the Israeli onslaught against Gaza. They're going to... Take out a bridge in Baltimore? Like, what the fuck are you saying? Uh, Rick Weil somehow blamed Russia? What? The ship that struck the FSK bridge mysteriously lost electrical power. NATO dreams about collapsing the Crimean bridge. Did Russia just demonstrate its ability to bring down a bridge without explosions? Was the ship disabled by a directed energy weapon? Directed energy weapons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Ukraine yes, funding was brought those. up. That kid C.J. Pearson, who was yeah. a conservative pundit, then he went liberal for like seven seconds, now he's back to conservative. Breaking, a ship just collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, causing it to collapse, with multiple motorists reported missing. Oh my god, that also reminds me. Ukraine. Oh, foreigners and idiots saying my state's name wrong. Oh my god. It's not, yeah. it's not Maryland. It's Maryland. Maryland. Get it right. Oh my god. We should be spending it on our own roads and bridges instead. Look, to be fair, I understand the argument of we're spending all this money overseas, like what we need to spend more here. But this guy's a hardcore Republican. So yeah, so I want to hear it from you. Against the infrastructure bill. And kind of, and kind of, I kind of don't want to hear much from you either. Tell me who voted against the IRA. So this is the classic. Let's stop the Ukraine funding and do and and take care of our people here. And then those same people turn around and say, "Get a fucking job, you homeless prick. You shouldn't get any help." Yep. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? DEI, of course they were going to blame. Oh, DEI. here we go, racism now. Here we go, racism. Managed by Synergy Marine Group, collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland around 1:27 a.m. Synergy Marine Group promotes DEI in their company. Did anti-white business practices cause this disaster? Uh, anti what the fuck are anti-white business practices? God. Guys, this thing, the existence of minorities is anti-white. What a fucking wow. Look, I know you're wow. triggered by how many Asians and Muslims and stuff that we have in my yeah. state, but get out of here. We like them here, so deal with it. And also, stop being char stop being Charlie Kirk people. How mm -hmm. many just for Oh my god, I don't really want to, have to deal with this crap again. It's not anti-white, and DI has nothing to do with this. How about we go with right yeah. now for what we know, it's an accident. And apparently, too, mm -hmm. since no one apparently brought this up, and I found out after this happened, that this ship also crashed into another bridge somewhere in Southeast Asia a few years ago. So this is oh, not even the wow, first time this happened. So yeah, and it Jeez. turns out it might also be because of... I know libertarians are not going to like this word. Deregulation! Apparently, yep. the company that owns this ship discouraged safety laws for a long time. Hmm. Because it was hmm. Remind you of other incidents that happened lately that we've covered? Yep, a lot of others. Because, you know, white people are functionally incapable of having accidents. Yeah, don't you know white if people are white perfect, guy guys? White ship, people are perfect, uh, and never can captain, have anything bad happen. They can never do anything power. wrong, remember? Yep, uh, yep, that's oh. what I believe. Come, come, on, because come, time. come on, guys. All you people that bring us up. Put on your clan outfit. Go get your Confederate flag. Just come out already. I'll have more respect for you if you do that. What am I gonna do with these people? Yeah. Here's another hey, one. Let's take the many money. Years ago, during the AIU shit with TJ, how TJ actually said he just come out and said, "I'd respect you more if you just come out and said, uh, hi, 'Hi, I'm racist and I have these opinions.'" Mm-hmm. And I'm sure Atheist Rue is still triggered by it. <laughs> 
Oh, he's always triggered. <laughs> Devin Tracy's always triggered. Uh, Devin Tracy. Still probably butthurt about the 2016 election, remember? <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, he, yeah. He's butthurt about everything. His existence is butthurt. Oh, my God. I remember there was another quote um, referencing AIU. It's funny that he considers that his avatar is a kangaroo because having hit several of them in my car, I can confirm that the kangaroos oh. are the stupidest fucking animals on the planet. As dumb as deer around here? Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 that's offensive to deer. The, stu the stupidest people, the stupidest animals around here are people. <laughs> you you have yeah. no idea. Oh, God, I'm not looking forward to summer coming up. You have no idea how many drunken idiots, college students, drunk driving around here, crashing into the bridge to get into my neighborhood and causing so many accidents in Ocean City, which is why me and my parents don't want to go in Ocean City in the summer because it's horrible. What if I told you mm. back in 2007 some stupid bitch ran out in front of my dad's car, somehow my dad missed him, but the car next to us hit her. Oh. I actually tried to flee the scene after getting hit. Wow. Yeah, that was fun time being out in the hot car for two hours with the police around. Man, that was very Damn. fun. Yeah. Never go to Ocean City in the summer, people. You will see the stupidest people everywhere. Please. Save your sanity. Do not go out there in the summer. for the new Baltimore Bridge from all the dollars oh, yeah. that we're sending. Funding for Iran now is the culprit. Yep. Mm -hmm. To yeah, Iran. Sure. Period. We're not sending any money to Iran. To the extent any money was ever sent to Iran, it was us. We had stolen their money. And then when we made yep. the Iran nuclear agreement, we said, here, we will give you back your own money in exchange for the IAEA going in there and making sure you're not creating a nuclear weapon. That was the end of the new U.S. taxpayer money. Oh. Uh, uh, why do I even do this fucking show? What am I doing? What am I doing? It's nothing I say, no matter how factual, no matter how backed up, nothing's going to get through to these fucking people. Nothing. Oh, another uh, thing, too, that reminds me. All of you just come out saying, yeah, we're from Jersey, Delaware, West Virginia, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. We're just jealous because Maryland is OP and the best in the world. Sorry, we're just too jealous. Oh, here we go. This one's my favorite. Oh, oh. And why open? I mean, open border, of course. Mm-hmm, of course. Uh, I don't oh. think Maryland is near the border, so I don't know how that would affect us, but okay. <laughs> this is the last Fucking one. idiots. Maria Bartiromo talking yep. about the uh, bridge collapse. Listen, what Like she I said, said You've been talking Klan's outfit, a lot about the Confederate flag, come on out of the closet, or please. Or potential for foul play given the wide open border. Uh -huh. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the And of course, here we got to go with this stupid BS about open border. border. How many times have we got to explain this to you, old man? You know that. Now, I saw the longer clip of this. I saw the longer clip. She literally starts by talking about the bridge collapse and immediately says, open border, bro. Immigration. Be happy you're not a Marylander during this time, the, the last two weeks. For wrongdoing or potential for foul play given... Talking about the bridge. ...open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the Republicans... Shut up, Karen. Talking about the bridge, search and rescue underway. It's, it's a fucking open border, bro. We gotta be safe and stuff, man. <sighs> Look, things in it's not like things in the past were good, right? We had before social media, we had the massive propaganda effort to get us into Iraq yep. illegally. Uh so the media landscape was a hellscape, no doubt about it. They built that propaganda for a long time and pushed the population. Man, I cannot to be wait to see your rage when we cover ABC if possible. Deep, and, then, and then I can see how you felt like I feel right now. A massive amount of propaganda. Mm -hmm. To get people to believe the dumbass thing that Saddam Hussein was working with Osama bin Laden. It people, the default was like, well, people aren't really going to buy this. We really got to make an effort to make them buy this. Now, in the age of social media, well. every Tom, Dick, and Harry can go out there and go viral and say the dumbest fucking shit you imagine. And by the end of the day, there's thousands who believe in each version of the conspiracy over the world's most obvious accident. Losing hope, y'all. I'm losing hope. I'm losing hope that oh. not only that truth will prevail, but that anybody even gives a fuck about truth anymore. If you can't look at the facts of this case and immediately conclude this is an accident, I'm sorry. Or just wait You're and more. find out dipshits, because we don't dumbass. know yet. It's been no. two weeks. And if it's not that, then you're just doing it on purpose to try to go viral by purposefully saying the dumbest shit ever. But what am I going to do with this stuff, man? I don't know, guys. You tell me. Hey, y'all, do me a favor. And I'll tell you all. You're just a bunch of either Klansmen or Confederates that are still butthurt, or 
You're just jealous that Maryland best. Deal with it. We have the best everything. Well, we're the richest, we have the best flag, you're all jealous, so keep coping. But seriously, fuck all of you pieces of shit. And and don't come to my state ever. We don't want you here. Fuck off. Same goes for all you idiots that come to Ocean City in the summer. Go away. So yeah, we gotta say about the idiots that I had to deal with the last two weeks. I am not surprised. <laughs> now I know how you felt when you saw ABC. Uh -huh. Hey, now you know how I feel. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Uh, hmm, does Adelaide have a major bridge in comparison? No, but we've... Uh, well, there's the bridge over the River Torrens. There's bridges over the River Torrens. Um, but they're usually pretty good. But then so. again, you're... Although you guys are on the coastline. Yeah, but, we are. But, but geographically, not on the coastline like how the East Coast is. You don't have seas all over place. Well, you do have coast... Stays on the East Coast, but not like in a straight line somewhat, like how it is for no, us. No, they, they kind of follow the coast. And so it's like... <laughs> you guys, um, probably, it's probably more like highways to each city and stuff. Yeah, we got, but yeah we got hot, big highways all just, over It's like Australia. how it is in Baltimore, going into the city and all that. Highways yep. everywhere and such. But yep. uh, the amount of shit I had to deal with, Karen Cunt, that just jealous because we're the best. Go yep. fuck off and oh god i just hope nothing like this happens to the bay bridge because then we actually would be screwed on the eastern shore oh boy that would be bad but thankfully yes. they're much taller so hopefully they can handle it all right mm -hmm. so now on to the next topic isis attacks russia oh boy so oh yeah this is definitely something that happened after we did the last episode in fact it might have happened while we were filming the last episode i think now i remember it ISIS, somehow still around after they were supposedly destroyed, did a major terrorist attack in Moscow. And they killed, last I checked, it was like over 130 people. And yeah. it like destroyed, it was, they were attacking, I think it was like some concert in Moscow, yep. and they pretty much destroyed the entire building, pretty much. Like, yep. it's the worst terrorist attack that happened in Russia in like 20 years and such. It's definitely going to be up there as one of the deadlier ones, too, because it's rare a terrorist attack gets into the hundreds from mm -hmm. crowd out. So yeah. now, of course, we're going to be talking about... Now, of course, we're going to make it abundantly clear. Although we have, let's just say, not the most friendliest opinion of Russia, since they're a Nazi state, we still are against innocent Russians dying. We're going to be a little bit more considerate than a lot of people are. What happened to them was wrong, and no one should die, especially going to a concert. So, I feel sympathy for all of you, although I have a, I have, I can't be sympathetic to the Russian government, however. No. What they're doing to Ukraine is what happened to you multiple times over, and can't ever excuse, mm -hmm. can't, and I'm not going to give you a pass either, because you're a terrorist attack what? does not mean what you're doing in Ukraine is justifiable. Same goes for Israel when it comes to the Palestinians, as I've, we've been seeing for months. So, horrible what happened. Condemn ISIS, of course, but you're still not going to be like, oh, we're going to forgive you what you're doing in Ukraine. No, no, mm -mm, not happening. Nope, sorry. You're going to need to do a lot more than that. So, yeah, let's see this shit. Some huge news dropped. A few oh, yeah, that also reminds me. Putler is blaming <laughs> Ukraine for this, if you didn't hear. Of course he is. <laughs> of course he does, because... Hey, he blames the... everything on Ukraine. I'm surprised you didn't blame LGBT people for once. Hmm. Okay, no, back, you blame LGBT uh, Ukrainians. There was a, oh, massive, that was a good compromise. terror attack that uh -huh. hit Russia. So I'm going to walk you through here. There's a Vox article breaking it down for us. But um, suffice to say, up front, there's quite a bit of speculation and uh, conspiracy theorizing going on on all different corners of the internet trying to figure out what really happened in this instance. So I'll oh, it's at least know 144 what I think is most likely. But they say here, the battle for blame over a deadly terror attack in Moscow. Oh, oh yeah. I, I don't know if Kyle covers this. I don't know if I even watched this video, Kyle, because I watched others. Apparently, oh man, Russia's going to be very angry hearing about this. But apparently, America and Iran warned them weeks ahead of time that yep. something like this would happen. Yep. And of course, Putin, being the complete retarded fascist that he was, said that America was trying to destabilize Russia. Of hmm. course. I think he's gonna have to eat some well, major karma. That, um, ISIS do have a new um, have, do have a few small base, do have a few presences in places. They've got a place in Afghanistan. 
they've What's got it? one in somewhere in North Africa. I don't remember where. And they've got one in um, Nigeria, in the Nigeria area. Totally. Ah, but he's eating a whole bunch of karma now. Maybe you should have listened yeah. to us. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, and of course, the, and of course, they've got a presence in Chechnya. Yeah, why am I not surprised? And, in the, and a bit in the so and in the Soviet stands. Yeah, and also, people have blamed the CIA for this. <laughs> of course, of course, people are in Harry's circle would believe. Remember, they believe the CIA is responsible for literally everything. Hey, I had to deal with Revolutionary Blackout Networks idiots earlier that I told you about, remember? What do you think yep. they used? Uh, yep. That was fun. But I'd like to see what their argument's going to be that Iran warned them about this. Because, what are you going to yeah. say? Are you going to say Iran is pro-America or controlled by the CIA? If so, that's even more funny than you think it's America's fault for something yep. like that. That's going to be even more hilarious. Mm-hmm. Signs point to ISIS in a terrorist attack that killed over 130 people near Moscow, but Vladimir Putin is connecting it to the war in Ukraine. Nazis gonna so, Nazi. Look, when the news first came out, yep. I have to say, of course, my first thought is, damn, it looks like this is some sort of a, when all we knew was, you know, the numbers and if they attacked some concert, some band was playing, my first thought was, Occam's Razor, of course, it's Ukraine. They're in, they're literally oh, Kyle, in war with uh, Ukraine. Just, no, 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 no. Why would Ukraine ever do anything like this? Do you know how instantly Western aid would dry up if they did that? Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Like, if Ukraine actually did that, fucking, that would stop World War Three because then the West would be invading Ukraine and Russia at the same time. Yeah, like, no, just no. Anyone who seriously thinks Ukraine does it, just no, 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 no. I'm not even gonna buy off it. Just no, 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 no. <laughs> Occam's razor is the, you know, the Kyle. Don't tell me you're gonna stop are being brain doing dead, some please. Some sort of retaliator- retaliatory terror attack in Moscow. So that that was definitely my first thought. But then they're the not the gonna go it, actively see, after civilians so like Russia has. Russia's mm-hmm. deadliest terrorist because attack because we put in them on a short may leash. May not be remember. directly related to the ongoing yep. war in Ukraine. But that doesn't there mean it won't have implications they behave. for the future of that conflict. In fact, the horrific attack has already become one more battle in the ongoing information war between Russia, Ukraine, that and you're Ukraine losing, and allies, including <laughs> the U.S. The nature and timing of the attack, as well as its alleged perpetrators, have all combined to make this tragedy fertile ground for conspiracy theories and motivated reasoning. Oh my God! At least we just had to deal with this shit with the people um, bridge class. So we need to deal with this in now. The City Hall Theater, just yeah. outside Moscow, on Friday where a concert by the veteran Russian rock band Picnic was happening. A group of gunmen wearing tactical gear and carrying automatic weapons shot concert goers and set fire to the building. Grizzly videos circulating on social media seen by Vox show the attackers firing on defenseless people crouched on the ground. With over 100 people wounded, the death toll is likely to rise, but it is already higher than the 132 people killed in the 2002 Moscow theater hostage crisis, an event which which it shared some disturbing resemblances and is likely to be the second worst terrorist attack in Russian history after the 2004 Beslan school hostage crisis in the country's North Caucasus region, which resulted in more than 300 deaths. The Islamic State terrorist network has claimed responsibility for the attack and U.S. intelligence officials have said they believe it was specifically the work of the group's Afghan affiliate, ISIS-K. Yep. The U.S. embassy in Moscow had issued a warning on March 7th advising U.S. citizens to avoid large gatherings due to reports that extremists yep. have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow to include concerts. Russian Maybe authorities also claimed listened, earlier Poodler. this month to have foiled an ISIS attack yep. on a synagogue in I Moscow. I hope you eat a whole bunch of crow for in this. In a video statement released Saturday, President Vladimir Putin said that 11 people have been arrested, including the four perpetrators of the attack who had fled the scene. Authorities in Moscow say the four were not Russian <sighs> citizens. So I think they might go on to explain this a little bit, but Man, they tortured the shit out of the people uh, that they captured. I think they cut one of their ears off. Just brutal videos. Oh, typical Russian barbarism. I mean, barbarism. Colin Clark, the terrorism analyst wrong. with what? the Sufin Center, said that evidence oh. suggested the four gunmen had experience and training. Quote, if you look at the videos of this attack, the way they shot and even the spacing between them when they carry out the attacks, it's clear they were well-trained, Clark told Vox. It doesn't seem like these were just local guys who were imbibing ISIS propaganda and decided to do something. I would put money on them being trained in Afghanistan. So, by the way, 
the Taliban, which is now the government in Afghanistan, came out and condemned this attack and said, in no way, shape, or form, yep. as, 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 we, as we've been pointing out for years, guys, the Taliban hates oh. ISIS because although they're both Islamic, Islamic fundamentalists, Af oh. the Taliban are nationalists. All they care about is their jihad oh. in Afghanistan. They have no interest in doing oh. global jihad like ISIS is. That's why they're at war with them for like 10 plus years now. Support this. Yeah. We're against this. And this is a theme that we've seen for a long time is that even among extremist groups, they say, man, these ISIS guys are way too extreme. We don't support these guys at all. What they're doing is way beyond the They're Muslim for the wrong Russia? Islamist extremist group like ISIS-K have long-standing grievances against Moscow dating back to the Soviet war in Afghanistan in the late 1980s, as well as the Russian Federation's brutal counterinsurgency campaigns in Chechnya and the North Caucasus in the 1990s and 2000s, and its support for Bashar al-Assad government in Syria. More recently, ISIS-K carried out a suicide attack targeting the Russian embassy in, in Kabul in 2022. So yeah, there's a, a bunch of potential motives here. One of them is, as they point out, uh, Putin and Russia are big allies with Bashar al-Assad. In fact, they help sort of prop up that government. Bashar al-Assad is, um, he's a Ba'athist. He's um, a Shia Alawite. And you had this uprising with both the Free Syrian Army, which are viewed as like the moderate rebels, but also Al-Nusra Front and a bunch of jihadist groups that tried to bring down the Assad government. And so you have a little bit of like a Sunni-Shia split there, and ISIS, of course, is a Sunni organization. They could still, they could want retribution and retaliation for the propping up of Assad's government. That's one thing. Everything that happened with Chechnya, Chechnya is a very Muslim region within Russia, and there are various separatist attempts uh, that took place throughout recent history there, and so it could be over that as well. There's a bunch of different potential motives. Of course, it just looks like, man, this timing is wild because Russia's literally in the middle of a war with Ukraine, and so the timing seems kind of crazy. The simple explanation uh -huh. that ISIS was responsible would be an inconvenient one for Putin. It would mean that he had ignored the U.S. warning of an imminent attack, which at the time he dismissed as blackmail yes, intended to destabilize Russian society. Horrific. In fairness, he would definitely not be the only world leader to recently ignore such well, a warning. he's going to use um, this to be like, uh, to be like, Threaten, to, threaten if, to threaten to nuke Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Also be another instance, is along with the remarkable the detailed US, US warnings of Russian war plans ahead of the 2022 invasion of Ukraine. You know what's funny? Like 20 years ago, of how shitty the intelligence community was with the Iraq war and such like that, now all of a sudden they like almost on a 180 and now like they've been like correct on like every single thing. It's very weird to mm -hmm. say that. And of course, dumb dumb leftists Keep insisting that, no, they're responsible for this somehow. Because we're stupid, I guess. When Americans, America's spies seem to know more about what was happening in Russia than Putin's own security services. So it's not that... Yeah, because it's obvious America is deeply embedded in the Russian government. With spies and such. Yeah. You think, you think they're good at it? We're the best at it. No one could beat us at it. Surprising that Russian authorities are already assigning blame elsewhere. How embarrassing so, has to be that we know more here, about you than you uh, Putin comes yourself, out and gives a speech And basically, said, basically points the finger at Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, if you got... The second I saw that, I went, uh-oh. Because then that means expect a massive escalation. Kyle, in, what are... Oh, my God. Now we're going to get to the dumb, dumb part now, Kyle. What What is Russia going to do with Ukraine? What are they going to do? Every time they, they escalate this, escalate that, nothing happens. Like, what are they going to do? They've pretty much done... The only thing that they haven't done yet is dropping nukes. But are they... Re mm. Well, it's been two weeks now, so obviously they haven't done anything yet. But do you really yeah. think they're going to start end the world because of a terrorist attack that they think Ukraine has involvement in, which they do not? Do you really think they're going to be that dumb? Like, no. There's no escalation, Kyle. Like, can you please... Get rid of your brain rot on this issue already. Aggression in Ukraine, right? I mean, for a while they had sort of fought to a stalemate. But, Which um, still is. You know, it, it's ramping up again, and it looks like they could be even more aggressive now. So this is a wild, <laughs> what wild situation. What can they do more, Kyle? Come on! Really? Come on, Asian can you not be this bad, please? Concert. The conspiracy theorizing, I would say... Uh, the main one, of course, is Ukraine. The Ukraine is behind this. Uh, like I said, at the v very beginning of it, Occam's razor felt like, well, probably is Ukraine. But then you look no. at the specifics of, of how it happened and who was involved 
and the nature of the attack. Uh, it actually doesn't look like Ukraine in that instance. But I could understand somebody thinking, Oh, it's probably Ukraine. No, literally war with Ukraine. I, I don't see that. that. Uh, but there was also a bunch Why of fake information floating right? around out there, like some people. Like, when you first heard about this before it was found to be ISIS, did you have any idea who he thought it could have been? I would have said ISIS. I would have thought. I would have said ISIS because, uh, because they've got a presence in Chechnya. The first group I would have thought would be like anti-Putin like rebels in the government. That would be the first thing that would come to my mind. And then maybe like Islamic jihadists like ISIS stuff. Ukraine's um, absolutely not. People created yeah. some uh, fake identification card which made one of the attackers Ukrainian which is not the case oh, at and all. And then Dylan Burns had to go after like, Ugh, look at the license tactic. plate! That's proof of Ukraine uh, but it's actually well, a Belarusian other, license uh, plate! You know, Boom. Here are the CIA and the US um, and the other one is Israel. Plenty of people are pointing the finger at Israel. And why would Israel do is, anything to Russia? Hey, like, you guys why? remember when Iran got attacked by ISIS, and it was right in the midst of what was happening in Gaza, but there was also a lot of, like, tit-for-tat and back and forth with the Iranian government, and, of course, Netanyahu has constantly been pushing for years to overthrow the Iranian government. And by the way, we're going to get so to the be, being stupid in the last topic. Perfect, where it almost seemed like what? ISIS... ISIS did the attack, but it almost looks like they were working <laughs> with it, with Israel in tandem to do it. And there's also, I'm sure you guys have seen, there's a number of articles out there from back in the day. ISIS uh, is an enemy of Hamas. Hamas is an enemy of ISIS. There was one time ISIS attacked within Israel, and then they apologized to Israel. So it's like, well, why are you apologizing? Because for, for geostrategic reasons, they could potentially work together. But any, anyway, the point is, when ISIS attacked... Russia, oh, ISIS attacked um, Iran, the timing was questionable and sketchy that it looks like Israel could be behind that, right? And so people are making a similar connection now, like, well, if ISIS just worked hand in glove with Israel and did an attack in Iran, then why wouldn't Israel also be doing that in Russia? But that theory actually falls apart kind of quickly because uh, international relations between Israel and Russia are actually good. Like, they actually are allies and Not trading quite partners. lately. Fact, not quite. Israel They're not as friendly as they were before. With the U.S. Even with BB being put power, sanctions on back in. When they invaded and he's a Putin cocksucker. No weapons yeah. to Russia. They've and actually been pretty we cool the last all of our allies like two to years. Help out pitch in and send weapons to Ukraine. So, relations between Putin and Netanyahu, Israel and Russia, they're actually, like, good. So the idea that like Israel said, will be behind it honestly doesn't Kyle. make any sense at all. Um, mm -hmm. And the CIA one, look, I understand the CIA does a million things that are horrible all the time. No, it's not just a thing no, I don't think with the CIA have anything to do with the thing that they do. That's getting dumb, dumb territory. does everything wrong. Currently, that's getting dumb, dumb left this year. In, in other countries, yep. and tries to overthrow that's governments. And that's we've seen American it time and time again. But again, it just doesn't add up in this scenario because if that was the case, why would the U.S. have issued a warning in early March that, hey, we have evidence that there's going to be, we have some intelligence that there's going to be some sort of an attack in Moscow. Why would they have warned about that attack if it was going to, they were, what, later on going to? Hmm, with America's intelligence community's track record recent, recently, I think it's time to consider maybe taking what they say committed. seriously, people. It just, yep. That doesn't really add up either, so. And then the final, uh, the cherry on top here, the final uh, nail in the coffin of all the theories, I think, is that ISIS came out and took responsibility for it. Then they saw a lot of people downplaying it and, and denying it and conspiracy theorizing. And then they came out again and were like, no, guys, seriously, we did this. <laughs> and then they had to come out again and release video that they had of it. Sounds so, like the exact same people that denied was that, ISIS. It's that just, um, Osama bin Laden was killed the, until Al-Qaeda had to uh, political admit, situation going on around the world now, it's almost hard for anybody to believe anything, right? Because... It's just there's so much going on. There's Russia invading Ukraine and doing a war with Ukraine. There's Israel trying to wipe Gaza off the map and ethnically cleanse them and genocide them. And there's so much chaos. There's so much instability that, you know, it's almost like you're never going to take something at face value. Everything at face value is initially going to seem like it's the Lee Harvey Oswald story, the official story about the assassination of JFK, where everybody's like, that doesn't make sense. Even to this day, over 50 percent of Americans are like, I don't buy that. That doesn't make sense. So everybody's initial reaction is sort of like that. But look, on this front, I could say I'm relatively convinced. Um, it adds up that, that it was an ISIS attack. The motive hey, is a little it, bit of a deeper question.
right? That uh -huh. um, I don't know if it has to do with the Syria thing. I don't know if it has to do with Chechnya. Um, it, I, don't know. Chechnya I don't know, right? But they tortured the shit out of these guys. And uh, it was a horrific, horrific, brutal attack. Again, over 130. Last number I saw was 137 and climbing. That's 144 so, on Wikipedia now. What's important from now, though, is how this is going to be used. And it already looks like Putin is pointing the finger at Ukraine. So buckle up, because I don't know if he really believes it or he's just using it. I genuinely don't know. Two but weeks later, nothing's the end the result sense, is the same either way. And there's nothing else they could do. He's going to ramp up against Ukraine, and that is a scary thing for the entire world. Hey, y'all, do me a favor. And Not really anything, nothing any more different oh. than before. So, yeah, what do you guys oh. see about this? Just typical. It was ISIS again. It was ISIS people, not Ukraine, not whatever else. It was ISIS. This seems like something, this is definitely something they can do. Yep, like we said before, very unfortunate what happened to innocent Russians, but this still does not give you a pass what you're all doing to Ukraine. Yeah. Absolutely not. Just like what Israel had to deal with on 10 7 is not going to give you a pass in our regard mm -hmm. either. What you're all still doing is wrong, and that's the end of it. All right. So yes. now, on to the final topic, Last I think. Topic. Israel attacks aid workers in the Iranian embassy trying to start World War Three. Because there I are... Know one of those aid workers was Australian, so Anthony Albanese is furious. And he should be? Hmm. Yep. I... Hmm, I bet you he baby better be thanking his stars if it's not hopefully not American that he killed. <laughs> oh boy. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he would eat so much crow that he would have to leave office finally. So yeah, of course, yeah. as we just covered before, Israel and all their war crimes on it did another war crime and something very stupid recently. First off, they did airstrikes on aid workers giving out food yeah. to Palestinians. And they killed mm -hmm. things like seven people and stuff. And they had to eat so much crow, even Biden had to go after him finally for it. So, thank you, senile old man Joe, for finally realizing, hey, war crimes are not very based, okay? But that was not all. They also did strikes on Iran's embassy in Syria. Yep. And pretty much destroyed the whole thing. And they killed three of Iran's generals that were there, too. Yep. Like, pretty much no different than when Trump killed Soleimani four years ago. And, of course, exactly, yeah. and of course is, I mean, Iran is threatening a response and all that. Now, who knows how mm -hmm. what that's going to be because, I mean, to be, like, really to Iran, like, what could they really do? Because if they did, like, anything, they're risking, like, getting destroyed by American Israel. Like, I'm sure yeah. right, Iran knows Israel I mean, has nukes. So if they do anything... Yes, Israel has nu nukes. And, and remember that... um. Bibi and them have threatened to mm -hmm. have threatened to use them Cause they're, on because they're is, genocidal on, on, neocons. Yep. yep, which is hilarious because if they did nuke the Palestine, it's gonna they're gonna get the radiation too. Hell, they're probably gonna get a bunch mm -hmm. of the blast radius, depending on how powerful the nuke is. Hell, if they had mm. like the most powerful nukes like America has, the whole that whole area would be nuked. No, they do that. They take out the, most of the Middle East. Yeah. Gee, maybe they want to do that in some, like, Jewish, like, jihad in their eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, so, yeah, like, yeah. Iran's threatening stuff, but, like, I don't really know what they could do that can safely avoid war and stuff. So, who knows? Maybe they'll just be all bluster. But we'll never know, and we'll see later on mm -hmm. such. But, yeah, yeah, this is still unbelievably bad and all that. So, let's watch mm -hmm. this. All right, y'all, got some big Israel news that I wanted to share with you before the show. Uh, this is a huge deal. So, apparently, Israel attacked a World Central Kitchen vehicle. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a bunch of people who are trying to feed starving Gazans. Um, not only did they attack this vehicle, they tri uh, triple tapped it, which means they bombed it three times. And... Um, yeah. The logo for the World Central Kitchen is actually on the top of the vehicle. Now, not only that, it was traveling in an area which, in theory, is supposed to have no conflict. So Israel uh -huh. should not be bombing there. It's traveling. Um, it's coordinated their movements with the IDF. So they told them, hey, our vehicle's here. Don't attack it. We're doing our humanitarian delivery. You think Israel delivery. cares? No! And, uh, they attacked it anyway. They probably and were also, giddy at the thought of killing you all. Because so, they're that evil. All evidence points to the fact uh -huh. that 
this was purposeful. This was purposeful. That on purpose they attacked a world central. It's as vehicle. Per- By it's the way, as like on purpose as what Russia is doing to Ukrainians. Is attached to this thing. And, oh my god! So, I get so much shit by idiots on Twitter. A, I get mad when I point that out. Even though be. I'm yeah. correcting point, everything you know, I say. Israel bombs a car full mm-hmm. of Palestinians. You know, you might hear about it on my show or Breaking Points or some outlets, but it doesn't even make that much news uh, in mainstream media outlets because that's. Just another day in Gaza where, you know, six Palestinians get murked while they're in a car or minding their own oh, business. Oh, yeah. I just love it. How, uh, how angry was um, Albanese? Is there like oh, a link? he was angry. Is there like he a link? Was, he, for, is there like a link for me to uh, like look up know. after this? I don't think there is one, but you can tell. You can tell. He's mad. Kind of mad. Maybe I can look up Australia-Israeli relationships on Wikipedia see if anything says recently. Let's get back to this. Doing video. nothing wrong. But in this instance, uh, you have a number of Westerners who were killed. You have, uh, there was a picture that was floating around online showing all of the uh, passports of the people who were killed. And you had some from Australia uh, and other countries. And yep. so that has made it a bigger deal. In has the it been like a major yeah, like protest? Or... Like Elvis... any, any major like protest down there because of this war crime? Or are they being complacent down there? Um, there probably is, uh, give me a moment, I'm going to just do something quickly. Um, but Israel is, uh, you know, still doing the thing where they're like, hey man, I don't know what you're talking about, uh, it was a total You're accident. anti-Semitic to say we otherwise. Hmm. For it. And so let's go ahead and wrap this up and, uh, we're going to keep moving on here. Again, I want to reiterate, traveling in an area where in theory there's supposed to be no conflict, coordinated with the IDF, uh, their route and the vehicle has a giant logo on the top of it that hey just like that opera house in what was it mariupol whatever had uh, said kids there and russia killed all hundreds of them where israel has because they don't care red cross vehicles and they have a giant red cross on the top of their vehicles and you could see pictures with giant holes in the red cross symbol and so yet again uh, i mean i really have a bridge to sell you oh i'll just look up on al jazeera at the moment not good yeah. enough. Australian PM slams explanation for aid workers killings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that is Al- Albanese. Where, that like, is Albanese. Yep. Yep. Definitely read Albanese. that after the episode's over. Is it purposeful? And you can like, I mean, like it is you, you, listen, you can tell it's like barely like he's normally very like Obama like guy like Obama. But, like, you can tell he's like yeah, but you can tell he's like he's does he. Does right. he get like? Right. Does he get? But he's like, he's like, you can tell he wants to get. He wants to show off. Get it mad. Wants to slap. So the, wants like to slap he's... y'all's flag across their face. Like I want to do <laughs> with the bridge collapse. <laughs> Incredibly naive. Does he get based angry like Bernie? <laughs> I... And idiotic at this point to think they're not doing it on purpose. So we also have. Uh, News came out after this that the World Central Kitchen announced it's pausing its aid operations in Gaza. Yeah, thank you, Israel. I'm sure all the Palestinians would like to have that government. food right now since y'all and, um, angry about the blockade again, you you're doing. Hey, was this the point? Mm-hmm. We- I swear, I can't believe I'm thinking about this, but after seeing the last few months, it's amazing how if America was doing this instead of Israel, it would be much better. It's hard to believe. Like, yeah. hell. Hell, when we invade Iraq and Afghanistan during the invasion, we still, like, airdrop food and all that. Israel ain't doing shit. They're on purpose killing people, for crying out loud. That's a myth. Yep. That's just insane. Mm-hmm. It's, like, gone all soak around, and then you have idiot being America bad and all that I had to deal with earlier. We all know that the U.S. Uh, defunded UNRWA, and Israel cut off funding at UNRWA, and a lot of Western nations did, although some decided we're going to go back to funding it when there was no evidence whatsoever that UNRWA was tied to Hamas. And um, this is another group that was on the ground doing some humanitarian work. And this has now led that group to pull out and say, hey, man, we don't want to put our people in danger as well. And to yeah, me, make the Palestinians like, suffer more, of course. I from know. the perspective yeah. of Netanyahu, this no matter what he says yeah, publicly, this, this, this he's thinking this, this, mission this, accomplished. This, this, this is genocide. Mm-hmm. Mission accomplished. So can't even get food, apparently. A great tweet I saw where somebody mm-hmm. said Israel um, does something like this then looks back to see if the U.S. is going to pull on their leash. And when the U.S. doesn't pull on their leash, they go, oh, 
okay. Total green light, total thumbs up. It's open season. Oh, yeah. That also reminds me, because this actually happened. I was thinking about covers, but then this pop-up and said, mm, this might be more important. There was um, a UN resolution about forcing Israel to do a ceasefire, and America actually abstained from it instead of vetoing oh, it. And, oh, yeah. boy, BB was mauled and mad about it. And I'm like, good. Oh, he was. Be mauled and oh. die in anger, please. You're up there with Putin in terms of evilness. Can you please go away? Yep. We're going to keep doing stuff exactly. like this. And that's why we've seen... I don't a, get how this weasel keeps coming back. ...and ramp up of the worst mm -hmm. kinds of atrocities. I mean, this he, is really... He's evil, I cannot that's overstate why. how much... Oh, that's this right. Is like evil always finds a way to weasel stuff. out of everything, like Trump. And you want to talk about losing the support of the world. We're beyond losing the support of the world. We're at the place Over where the common sense Democrats perspective don't is like you guys and anymore, saying, and that's all, all your fault. All people locked up in the Hague. Yeah. Anybody who's and you guys are going to cost by the election. Making decisions like this on a daily basis. Yeah. You should Actually, be behind bars be forever. If he loses, but this is the issue so, that's going to cost not even, Look, I, what I gave you so far is bad. This is not even the worst of it. We have, honestly, something that might even be considered way worse because of the international consequences affiliated with it. So we also got news yesterday that um, Israel bombed a Iranian embassy in Syria. They bombed an Iranian embassy in Syria. And yep. the purpose of that one was basically to take out the person who is the replacement for Qasem Soleimani, who was a top Iranian commander. He was the general that Trump this. killed in 2020. Yeah, uh, he's a top Iranian that. commander uh, who honestly was on the ground fighting ISIS, one of the front lines in the uh -huh. fight against ISIS, and Trump took him out. You remember how that sparked a huge controversy worldwide? And yeah, thank a, you, a Trump, for doing that. That was like one of the stupidest things you ever did attacked. in terms of foreign well, policy. Again, it looks like Israel realizes, hey, the Americans really don't give us any serious consequences. Yeah, they'll do the virtue signal and they'll do the PR stuff where they try to say we're not with Israel when they commit their war crimes. But ultimately, it is a green light because they're going to keep sending us money. They're going to keep sending us weapons. And behind the scenes, everything's hunky-dory. And so they, again, on purpose bombed an Iranian embassy in Syria. That's like that's like a double yeah. war crime. It's a war crime because there is no legal authorization to attack anything in Syria. And it's also a war crime because it is an act of war against Iran. You can't just bomb an Iranian that's embassy it. They want World anywhere. War Three. And act like, you know, hey, I have the ability to do this and there should be no consequences. So I oh, am yeah? uh, do that to an way, American embassy and see Ryan what happens. Points yeah. out, Israel's norm breaking airstrike on an Iranian embassy in Damascus appears to have led Iran to loosen the leash on its proxies who are now attacking an American base. America now that you brought this up, maybe we could talk about some of the options that Iran could respond with. Honestly, personally, what? I think it would probably be more like that. Like, proxy mm. attacks, stuff like that. Honestly, I think it's more mm. likely that they'll do something to America instead of Israel. Because mm. you well, like, they can't really do much to Israel. Yeah, because you remember what, after, like, when we killed Soleimani, they attacked American bases in Iraq and all that, and did anything happen to them? No. Mm. And, it, and they've been, ever, ever since then, they have been regularly attacking American bases and stuff in Iraq. But again, they've gotten away with it, too. And they've done a lot of prox um, attacks on American bases throughout Syria and Iraq over the last several months and all that. Again, mm -hmm. nothing's yeah. happened except that one time where they actually killed American troops. And that's when America bombed dumb Houthis and such. So yep. I think it's more likely they might do something to America because they might have a better chance to get away with it than Israel. Mm -hmm. Because if they do something to Israel, they're risking not only war with Israel, but bringing us in too since we're ally with them. Mm. Whereas, like I said, if they do anything, they're risking World War Three. Yeah. So Iran, if anything, might be way more restraint than Israel in that, which is pretty yeah. sad for Israel since you're not supposed to be an authoritarian regime, mm -hmm. but you're acting like one. There was yeah, one being an authoritarian dictatorship. There was there was this one um, tw person on Twitter. There's one person on Twitter I regularly watch. On he used to do a lot of like coverage of the Russo-Ukraine war, but because of the Hamas-Israel thing pop up lately, he only talks about that pretty much now, which is much of my annoyance. There was one tweet he liked now of course i don't believe this but this one person tweeted that that america and iran supposedly because i'm not i don't believe this came to some sort of understanding recently that if 
that um, America will not respond to Iran if they t do any attack on Israel as long as they don't attack American assets. Mm -hmm. but, but I find that hard to believe. We're allied with Israel. Th that would like undermine America's ally with alliance with Israel, and that would make look us look kind of bad in every other alliance. Like that could maybe give Russia ideas about NATO. So I really yeah. don't believe that. But like we don't know what's gonna happen because it just happened a few days ago. But like, what do you think? Mm-hmm. American Pretty troops much, are now yeah. being attacked over Israel's hubris. So I don't know how many of you guys remember this. We talked about this on this channel. But there was a moment where the Shia militias, who are proxies of... Oh, oh yeah, another thing right up, too, on this mm -hmm. guy following Twitter that they Iran could potentially consider doing an attack on an Israeli embassy at a, in a third country. Like what Israel just mm, did. I can say it, yes. Iran came out and said, hey, you know what? Our fight is not with the Americans. We're going to stop attacking your bases. Now, my guess is there was some sort of communication behind the scenes. Yeah, I think after they did um, all the um, Ira Iranian proxies did that attack on American base recently, they killed troops. And after America responded, I think Iran like told them like chill out on attacking American base because mm -hmm. that massively went down after with that. With U.S. troops mm -hmm. and uh, Iran, or directly with their proxies, I think Iran was pissed at their proxies for attacking so many American bases, and Iran felt like they were getting the heat for it, and they were As afraid should. there'd be some retaliation from Washington against them. So the Iranian proxies released a statement not that long ago that was like, "All right, look." Our beef is with Israel, it's not really with the Americans, we're going to wrap it up with attacking the American bases. Well, as a direct result of Israel bombing an Iranian embassy in Syria, now it looks like Iran said to their proxies, fuck these guys, man, take the gloves off. Now you can mm -hmm. do your retaliatory strikes, now you can go after uh, U.S. troops in the region. And so, again, as uh, Ryan Grimm points out, because of Israel being so immensely unhinged, because of them um, spitting in everybody's eye and slapping everybody in the face, now everybody's in danger as a result of that. Again, yep. I cannot stress enough just how much of a rogue state they are. I mean, we're looking at, I mean, at this point, it's, it's like, they're a terrorist you can compare them to like Saddam Hussein when he was like gassing the Kurds. And of course, you guys know he was our boy at the time. And then it was only later mm -hmm. on that we made him build him up to be this horrible dictator to kill and we had to take too. him out yeah. with morality and justice and all this stuff. I mean, you guys know the, the whole history of that, but that's where we're at. Like, you want to talk about a pariah state. Now, also, I should point out, Iran sent a letter to the UN Security Council saying it, quote, reserves its legitimate and inherent right to respond decisively to strikes on their consulate building in Damascus. So, in other words, Israel committed an act of war against us. All bets are off now. And let's be clear, mm -hmm. this is what Israel wants. Israel wants a broader war with Iran. Yeah, they want, Israel want, wants they a broader actually war, want war with with Hezbollah. Three. They want Lebanon. a third world war so they can start firing nukes everywhere. That's what they want. And the U.S. is more than happy to grant them their wish. By the way, Murtaza Hussein yeah. made a great as point said, about this. He as, said, I said, as I said, Iran wants to do a regional war and America's war will be like, all right, let's start World War Three. This new round of money and weapons and fighter jets now that are being sent to Israel when Biden just this week decided, OK, here, I'm going to sign off on more of this stuff for you. That appears to be more about Hezbollah and Lebanon and Iran. That, in other words, it's not about the Palestinians. And it's not about, coming Iran, you know, hey, keep Lebanon, your ethnic cleansing and your genocide you going. And that's well. why we're giving we this to you. No, it's more. Three. In the case that this goes, uh, this blows up even more and gets more regional players involved, that's why we want to give you these uh, particular kinds yep. of armament. Yep. So, again, and it's because, Joe Biden, as I said, eyes wide open. Don't want, yeah, it's because they're going to go regional, and then the um, U.S. is going to make it global by um, attacking China. Understands exactly what's going on here. Keeps giving the green light, keeps giving the thumbs up. And um, yep. there are no breaks in the car at all when it comes to Israel. They are a rogue state. They are a pariah state. The attack on the World Central Kitchen vehicle was on purpose. They killed a lot of Western aid workers in the process. The attack on Qasem yeah. Soleimani's replacement, and by the way, a number of other people were there as well. Lord only knows how many were civilians. I'm sure we're not getting good enough information at this moment to, to know. That was on purpose. 
they have, this is a colossal escalation. It's almost like they think, well, uh, we're right on track with our, with our plans here to ethnically cleanse and genocide Palestinians and, and Gaza. Now we're going and, to, and now we're Gaza. going to push. To, and everything is going so swimmingly going from our escalate, perspective there. We're going to try and push for World War Three. Why not uh, broaden this out and do what we wanted to do for a long time? Because you guys know there's been reporting forever. Broaden it out. That, say, um, broaden it out to a world. Broaden it out under Obama was trying to like basically conflict. prod the U.S. to get involved in a war with Iran because they wanted to do, to do regime change in Iran. Genuinely rogue state. And um, again, I keep reiterating this point, but it's shocking a to Nazi me that state. more people don't know this and understand yep. this. Zion Nazi terrorist when, organization. You can have Ronald Reagan stand up to Israel. Because he was, because uh, Israel was bombing Lebanon, and Reagan famously said, "This looks like a Holocaust. You got to wrap it up." And within 20 minutes, the Israeli Prime Minister called him and wrapped it up. Uh, when you have George H. W. Bush standing up to Israel and telling them, "Look, I'll give you 10 billion dollars in loan guarantees, uh, with the condition we'll that you freeze one, illegal we'll expansion," we'll give you 100 billion dollars. We'll give you 20 billion Reagan dollars and H. W. if you help us start World War III. Can stand up to Israel and Joe Biden, proud Zionist Joe Biden can watch massacre after massacre and just shrug, send them more money, send them more weapons, act like this is standard operating procedure. I don't think people quite understand just how much we're on the brink of something absolutely devastating. I mean, there already is something absolutely devastating in Gaza. Don't get it twisted. It is an ethnic cleansing. It is a genocide. 40,000 Palestinians dead, nearly 15,000 children dead. That is mind-numbingly evil. But you just wait. If this expands as it looks like it is going to, to uh, both Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Iranian government, if they retaliate, which they do have every right to do now, we're off to the races. We're off yeah. to the races. It'll be, it will and, be, um, it'll be, you think America is just going to sit by? And then, become, and then go into, and a, and then go, Israel fight genuinely Iran? go into World War Three. No, they're going to drag well, us into it also. I can actually see Israel and being like, you know what, of, we're going to, you know what, when we're going to do, we're not going to do X, Y, and Z, America, unless you bought, you start World War Three. You make way this, this regional war a global war. Could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. Bring China into the war. Avoid. Bring Europe into the war. He's a proud war. Zionist, and Israel is our top ally. They're the most moral army in the world, and all that fucking garbage. The fact of the matter is, they're a truly a rogue state, a pariah state. Uh, they're packed they're full of war criminals. Again, they're Every they're one of them below. But Kyle, you're anti-Semitic to say that. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> remember that. Uh, remember that it's anti-Semitic to oppose Israel genociding the Palestinians and Israel starting World War Three. Mm -hmm. In prison, Netanyahu, Ben Gavir, Smotrich, the Israeli generals, you name it. The people were pressing the buttons to attack the embassy, to attack this uh, food convoy. Like, what are we doing here? And they still think they could pull the wool over over everybody's eyes. And oh no, no, that was an accident, bro. <laughs> That was a total accident. We didn't mean to do it, even though the fucking giant emblem is on top of the vehicle that says that it's the World Central Kitchen. I, I, again, I'm at, I'm at a loss for words. I don't even know how to do these segments anymore without, with knowing how to properly convey to you how big the stakes are and how terrible this is. It, yeah. It, Israel is a stain on this world, man. They are totally out of their mind and unhinged and um they're to, blame. Said, they're, um, they're to blame for all of this so do with that whatever you will but um Nazi want to do a quick video before the show today now because they're doing their, um, this is uh genocide. somehow they managed to escalate somehow they managed to make it worse somehow they managed to still at this late day continue to shock everybody when we're already so deep into the absolute destruction and massacre of gaza yeah. That's what Zion, I mean, Nazi Zionism does to you people. Yeah. So yeah, what do you guys say about that? Doing war crimes and starting shit with Iran again. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like they want, they're like, in America, we made this a regional conflict. Can you make it into World War Three? Yeah. And then of course, maybe Biden will have to finally take the L and admit that we can't. We can't do that. Sorry, yeah. you guys are too. Nazi S for us, sorry. Yep. Because you guys, just like with Russia, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and China, are like the new axes of evil. All five of you are pieces mm -hmm. of shit. Yep. All four tearing evil. Every one of you. So yeah, Israel, 
evil war crime nation, just like Russia and all that, and I'm going to be called anti-Semitic and all that, even though I'm correcting everything yeah. I say. <laughs> all right, guys. So mm. that is it for this episode. And next time yeah. will finally be episode 100. Oh, one zero zero. And, finally. And we have something special in mind potentially coming up before we do episode 100. But we're going to have to discuss yeah. that in the future. Come up. So tune in for that, people, when it happens. So see you all maybe in the future for that special. And see you all next yeah. time for episode 100. Yep. Yeah. See you then.